we'll see how <laughs> that works out. Welcome to Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th edition uh, role-playing game. Tabletop turned uh, online for the moment as we are all sheltering in place. Or, or sheltering in place, so it makes me think we're, we're hiding from a meteorite storm or something. Uh, we're all uh, quarantining. We're all separating. We're all being at home. And uh, we have uh, three of the players tonight. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I'm the host, GM, and uh, Fool, who decided to create the entire world. Uh, and uh, I have my players with me. We now know who they are playing. If you're watching live and wondering, hey, did you put the video up last week? And uh, no, I, uh, I actually <laughs> forgot to put the video up. Uh, I will be putting both videos up this week so you can uh, listen to or watch the, rather the session zero are situated in the uh i'm just going to get my named list here because i started naming some things which is pretty cool and we already have a list <laughs> i already have i already have a full page uh so just to give us uh, some situation you're on the island of Escus under the kingdom of alaria alaria itself is an island but the kingdom of alaria spawns about seven islands i seem to recall uh, currently in the southeastern islands. Eskis and the nearby I I Icro, a pair of islands. Uh, we are on the western side in a place called Silver Moon Bay. That's the name of the general area along the sunken shore of Eskis with the nearby town of Elthvater. So Elthvater is the name of the town. Um, it basically stands for high water. It is along the shore with a very deep uh, tide of about 40 feet difference in high and low tides. So massive amounts of difference, which enables some of the larger ships to come to shore into the dock uh, later on uh, when the high tide is in. Otherwise, the wooden docks extend out quite a distance and are quite high. Uh, at low tide, extraordinary beaches are revealed, and many people go to harvest uh, mussels and other uh, other shellfish uh, down along the edges. On the northern edge of Silver Moon Bay stands the imposing Cape Raven, a very high. Uh, is it, I think is it the fjord is the is the inward one. This is a promontory, I guess. Standing a couple of feet, uh, a couple of hundred feet tall, with a castle with a lighthouse on top. That is Cape Raven, from Baron Harquin, who is the uh, the lord for the area. He is the baron for the area. Uh, on the his name is Baron Harquin. H A R Q U I N. Harquin. Baron Elias Harquin and Baroness Corinthia. They have three children. I told you I wrote a bunch of names down. I will get into all of those right now. There's no quiz. Uh, to the southern edge of the bay. So the bay is a, is a U-shaped. On the one end of the U is Cape Raven. On the other side, in the Cold Pack Point Shoals, is a lighthouse. Uh, lighthouse is on the shoals and actually sits on top of rocks uh, that when the tide is low you can walk across to the lighthouse when the tide is high the lighthouse is surrounded by water for a couple of hundred feet um, so you can actually walk there during low tide but otherwise it is isolated Uh, the t name of the town, by the way, is Aelthwater, A-E-L-T-H-V-A-T-T-E-R. It's kind of a, a combination of, I think, Swedish and uh, Finnish. Uh, Aelth is more or less high and Vater is more or less water. I say more or less, mostly less. Um, there is a council of elders in Elthvater. I haven't named them yet, but there is the Lord of the Watch, uh, who is a human named Sir McManus. Just as another figure you might know. Um, these basic um, place and 
people names that are things that we would know, could you possibly like put them as a handout or something? I will absolutely do so. Perfect. Uh, With my dyslexic brain, you're spelling things, but I can't write it fast enough. That's totally fair. Uh, this is more to get the uh, the initial oral uh, familiarity with it. Yep. Uh, also for myself, because for some of these, this is the first time I'm saying them out loud. Um, also, I finished writing some of these about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, but yes, I will be putting together a bit of a handout. Now, for a more familiar uh, couple of things, uh, one for Medric. Uh, you know Flamekeeper Tidewell. Who is the uh, the one and only member of the Church of Ignis, uh, in the Temple of Ignis, rather, uh, here in Aleswater. Did you say uh, Tidewell? T -I -D Tidewell. T I D E W E L L. Uh, Flamekeeper Nora Tidewell. But you would never call her Nora. Okay. Uh, she's definitely your senior uh, and would be someone you would be probably checking in with on a regular basis. The person you will receive your further uh, teachings of Ignis from. Okay, okay. Uh, the inn where Medric and Annie are staying is called the Three Bells, which is a uh, pun, naturally. The uh, sign outside the door has three uh, delightfully shaped carved bells in it which is how it's recognized by most people. And most people recognize the three bells as the three women who run it. Uh, the one you spoke to before, the one you helped with the, uh, the uh, rat problem was the innkeeper, Sandy Bracegirdle. She is a halfling. Her sister works in the back as the cook. That's Sydney. And her other sister works in the back as uh, the baker. Actually, the cook is also a brewer. And the third sister is called Saffron. So Sandy, Sydney, and Saffron, the brace girdle tri triplets, otherwise known as the three bells. Uh, the brewery is downstairs. The bakery is in the back. They do sell that as well as make food for uh, the general common room inn. And they have about a half a dozen rooms in this in this uh, inn. So that's, I think, the basic rundown of those. A couple other things you would know, and, and Silas would know this for being a local anyway. Um, the uh, the promontory, Cape uh, Raven, uh, is very very high up, but midway up the cape. On the seaside is a private dock with a private elevator. This time, there's a, a few people that have already left. Breakfast starts really early, around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. They start serving food for the fishermen who go out that day. Large number of fishermen here, dozens of boats. It's the main industry. Uh, so you'd probably be in the second or third wave. I doubt any of you really got up for the 5.30 breakfast call. Y'all know. <laughs> so how about each of you describe visually your character, how they would look on a casual morning? Uh, we'll start uh, start in the middle with Annie. How about that? Um, so Annie would be in fairly baggy clothes, um, and she would have her blonde hair is... And it is under a hood. Uh, she always wears that hood. Little hooded Annie. Yep. Okay. All right. And she's sitting casually at the table. How? How? Do, what's her expression? Is she happy? Is she bored? Is she tired? Um. She's probably very pensive. Uh, and she would probably be eating, um, a decent meal. Okay. Fresh bread made that morning. Um, right. Eggs are available as cold meats from the previous nights. Lots of cheese. Definitely right. lots of go... cheese. <laughs> lots of cheese, okay. Uh, let's go to Silas. Um, okay. Silas is a little shorter than average, about 5'6". Uh, Human? Yeah. And he's a fairly thin guy. He's not strong. Um, he's 
he'd have his game face on. He's happy. Um, he also is wearing so like a hooded robe. Uh, it's a very high quality hooded robe. Uh, he probably has the hood down right now, but uh, but it, you know, those uh, sort of galaxy prints that you can get for uh, clothes like dresses and such, something like that. So there's not like it's not an actual galaxy, but there's kind of stars and bright colors and whatnot. Um, it's all just the the dying job on the on the robe, though. It's not magical in any way. Uh, although occasionally he will make it twinkle or something, because uh, he can do that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, he also has uh, long blonde hair, um, and uh, he's very pretty. He's a very nice looking guy. Um, uh, if I could use the picture I'd put I'd get for him, then uh, you'd see that. But uh, uh, yeah. And uh, he's he probably was up at 530 because uh, uh, his family's a fishing family. And even if he doesn't go out on the boats, uh, he helps get them ready uh, and uh, then walks to town, which is a couple of miles. Um, so he probably just got here and uh... it's okay. This is a fisherman's place. Vegetables to have no place here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they like to have them. They help season the stew. Uh, what about Gideon? Hmm? Uh, right. Yes. Um, forget about that for a moment. Uh, yeah, as he's uh, as he sits down, uh, as probably as the plates put down next to him, uh, he'd probably sit with Annie unless she objects. Mm. Um, uh, as the the food is put down, uh, a little green head pokes its uh, way up out of the neckline of his robes uh, and Gideon, his uh, Silas's pet uh, snake bird uh, pops a head out and uh, sniffs the food. Then Silas will give him some grapes. What does uh, Gideon look like? Uh, small green snake, maybe a couple of feet long, but uh, about like Eight inches back from his head, there's a uh, small set of wings that fold out. Uh, does, does he have limbs on. otherwise? Nope. Okay. Nope. Literally just a snake with a pair of wings. It's a, uh, it's a magical world. And probably some feathers. Very cautiously at it. Just keep eating. <laughs> Are snake birds uh, common around this area of the world? Or? Uh, they aren't uncommon here. Okay. Um, you haven't seen there. You would see them kind of a little bit uh, in the wild, but um, most people here don't seem to pay too much attention to Gideon. But Gideon does stay out of, stay out of sight most of the time. Okay. He likes warmth, <laughs> <laughs> and apparently likes Silas. Cool. And the third person, Medrick, describe your blonde locks, because apparently that's the trend. <laughs> Medrick has just short locks of nothing spectacular. No hair of, sp of spectacular collar. Uh, he wouldn't have his armor on for breakfast because, well, breakfast. And I'm assuming he would have gotten up for the last, I don't know, like the 8.30 wave of breakfast. Also, is this like a buffet place or do you have to order? Uh, this place they do order. They do do buffet for lunchtime, basically, where they lay out the food and, and people come by and paper bowl yeah. but uh for breakfast time it's basically made to order yeah. it's it's made to order but just about everybody gets the same thing okay <laughs> not a lot so of rhetoric is eating a large pile of food and there's a lot of bacon in there biggest bacon and, okay yeah, just, what do his casual look, clothes look like without his armor just basic nothing spectacular clothes i guess <laughs> Okay, just simple spun, uh, you know, tan clothing or, or yeah. uh, white cloth. Probably just like dark brown and beige. What does his symbol of Igneous look like? And does he wear it openly? Well, he's got an amulet, but it's probably like inside his shirt. Okay. All right. 
So previously, you guys had uh, kind of met and struck up a conversation here uh, when some uh, rats had been announced in the place and had tracked down the source of the rats. Does Medrick wear the hat, by the way? Or no, that's, that back in his that's room? still in his room. <laughs> okay. uh, because you tracked down a, uh, a uh, ne'er-do-well who had been releasing rats in the restaurant uh, after tracking down the ne'er do well and uh, forcing him to answer, he replied that he was working for someone else. Uh, they didn't want any, any harm or danger, and you took the hat, uh, essentially, uh, which Medrick now keeps in his room. Uh, I'll let you describe what the hat actually looks like, but it is a, what was it called? A hat of vermin yeah. summoning? Yeah. Hat of vermin, I think. Yeah, yeah. hat of vermin. Uh, weird sort of thing. So... Uh, and to also recap a little bit, Silas, as uh, mentioned, uh, his family is a fishing family, lives nearby, just a little bit out of town, but Silas himself tends to spend a lot of time in town. Uh, Annie just came off a boat into town, uh, not the same boat, but Medrick also came back on a boat. In the backdrop of this, um, in an indeterminate period of time ago, which is also kind of hard to fathom, there was this strangeness that happened that fell and, and uh, sat over the land in everybody's mind. What everybody is referring to simply as the Great Confusion. And in history, that's what they'll note it to be as well. It is a time when you're not really sure what happened. A certain amount of pa time passed, less than weeks, but more than days. Not really sure what happened other than... Hundreds of thousands of soldiers were turning home from some sort of victorious battle. Uh, the land sometimes seems a little strange and a little bit uncertain. You have a hard time remembering any sort of detail that happened in those times. Um, for both Annie and Medrick, it happened uh, essentially while you were at sea uh, and then uh, disembarked to this new place. For you, Silas, um, the sort of timelessness that happens in a small fishing town where the 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 observed rituals of daily activity are pretty normally uh, the same it's almost hard to even notice something like the great confusion uh, aside from there seemed to be a jump slightly in the uh, amount of fish gathered as if several days had passed uh, and good fishing had been had but no one can really remember going out to sea but uh, in in a few days even uh, after that, um, it feels as though, while a strange memory doesn't have as much impact on you. But Medrick, you find yourself released from the military. Uh, the captains were given orders that they were disbanding, that whatever war they had been fighting, and they don't remember details, and neither do you, but they had been given messages to say the war has been disbanded. And numerous soldiers came off your ship and are now flooding into town looking for work, many of them traveling on already to the larger city of Pitajun, which isn't too far away, uh, or seeking uh, work in town. To that end, you've seen some job notices. The Baron seems to be offering uh, a, a service contract for soldiers. It is a 10-year service contract, exclusive to him, in which you'd be paid... Uh, I believe it's... Oh, I've got it somewhere here, but basically you'd be paid a... Uh, uh, 10 silver a day, plus bonuses based on scale of experience. Given room and board, but it is a contract for the watch, um, which is hired by the Baron, but run by the Lord of the Watch, uh, who is Sir McManus, as I mentioned earlier. Um, however, it is an, a 10-year exclusive contract. And for your own reasons, which you can elaborate if you like, Medric, uh, you decided not to take that contract. What would be some of the reasons yeah. Medrick wouldn't take that? It's a pretty long contract. And I mean, it's a time of uncertainty. So, and Medrick isn't sure what he's, what, what he's going to be doing in the next week, month, years. And it, it just, he'd rather wait before he locks himself down for like a 10 year contract, basically. And you can see that same, um, that same choice that same uh challenge going on the face of many of the soldiers you've served with some of which you've seen here and there but uh some of them are making that choice to take it looking for any sort of certainty in these uncertain times others are holding out but it still seems attractive to them uh 
I have to find her name. There she is, Sandy. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandy comes over to your table uh, delivering uh, a, uh, a pot of coffee or willing to fill up cups if people are interested. Sandy is a halfling uh, dressed uh, with uh, modest clothing. Nothing terribly fancy, but there is a delicate red ribbon that she ties into her uh, sandy-colored hair, uh, which kind of flows down her back. She always seems to have a smile and a wink in her eye, uh, always seems to be uh, uh, trying to keep everybody uh, happy in the room. She's constantly circulating. Uh, it's a little bit weird because she is a halfling uh, that she typically carries the, uh, the trays on her head, balanced carefully, uh, usually one arm, sometimes no hands. Uh, she's quite uh, adept. Coffee? I'll grab a refill. <laughs> And give her thanks. <laughs> oh, oh, my pleasure for what you've done for me. I mean, those rats were disgusting. And you don't know what kind of thing that would do to your business. How well are you faring? Uh, are the rooms okay? A little tired. The coffee's going to help with that. Aye, are you feeling tired too? I had the most terrible sleep last night. I kept tossing and turning. I don't know if it was the rats that I was still thinking about or something else, but... Oh, well, it's no sleep for the wicked, and I must have been terribly bad when I was younger. She gives you a wink. And you, Annie dear, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing pretty well. The, the room is lovely, and, and the food is delicious. And Mr. Silas, it's good to see you in business today. Are you going to be entertaining later? No, possibly. Maybe down at the docks. Oh, well, I'll be sure to spread the word. Well, thank you very much. Now, uh, <laughs> don't mind my delicacy, but uh, have you found any work yet? I know you've only just come to town. Uh, Silas, I know you have your regular job and all, but uh, I know, uh, Medric, you're one of those soldiers off the boat, yeah? Yes, soldier and medic. Uh, I perform some healing for people who need it. And they give me what they can afford. Oh, that's that's handy. That's his. It's not really steady work waiting for people to be ill, though. No, it isn't. I mean, you'd hope it wasn't steady. I suppose in war it was. Yes. And I suppose uh, I can take on jobs as well that involve unhealing. <laughs> unhealing sounds kind of sinister. Hmm. <laughs> There's also plenty of that in war as well. And uh, how about yourself, Annie? I'm... Any plans? Not many. I've just been wandering. I ended up here on a whim. Well, Eighth Valver is not uh, the worst place to be. It can be a little, uh, little quiet at times, but we try to make our own fun. And Silas does his bit down by the docks for entertaining people. Daddy does. Turns in a good coin. <laughs> does. Has anybody looked at the job board today? Who are you asking? Uh, just her random her conversation her? between the players. Because I figure, like, checking the job board is going to be something we do, or some of us do, every couple of days. Just to see if there's any new ones that came up. And if they're good, I want to be the first one to grab them. <laughs> <laughs> Can't move my camera the wrong direction. Yeah. Oh, the list is going to get. Um, I haven't yet. Uh, I do breakfast first, but well, it might be a good idea. Okay. Um, there's no job board in the inn itself, but there is a common spot in town, kind of a central area, which is both a gathering place as well as a notice board. That's one of the places you'll see yet another of the uh, hand-printed posters uh, from the Baron uh, offering work to the soldiers. Um, it's one of the biggest posters on there, and you can definitely see that people have been checking it out. Um, also on that board, however, 
there are a few ongoing tasks which, uh, you know, as you guys uh, have some downtime, you can choose to engage in one of those. I'll just mention some of those. They won't be necessarily ones that lead off to uh, adventure, but things like pearl diving. They're always looking for more people to go out and do pearl diving. Uh, it is a dangerous but very potentially rewarding uh, uh, endeavor. Uh, there is a call for additional loggers uh, as they are uh, going into the spring season. It's about time to start harvesting wood uh, for building, especially large timber for uh, shipwrights. Uh, there's always call for uh, caravan uh, members uh, going into Pitajun or into uh, uh, Thrivia, which is the uh, basically the central point, a small, not exactly a town, it's mostly an inn and a store, uh, but where three roads meet uh, between here, Pitajun, and the uh, Dwarven uh, Den. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a, a few other notices. You do see a couple of things on there that catch your eye. Um, one of them uh, Farmer Winthrop, outside of town, uh, is looking for uh, stalwart individuals to catch night thieves. Uh, some of the cattle and sheep are being stolen. Uh, suspect suspect uh, that uh, uh, Knowles, a Knoll uh, uh, clan, has moved into the area and starting to predate on his, uh, on his uh, flock just outside of town. There's also a call for uh, uh, those with a green eye is the way it's written uh, Arda is seeking uh, those who can forage for special herbs uh, out by Cedar Ridge um, Silas you'd know that Cedar Ridge is about an hour away uh, kind of heading into the woods there's not really any settlement out that way but it's where there's uh, a bit of a rise of rocky ground and uh, cedars are, it is a cedar forest basically surrounding it. A bit of a wild area, um, but that is Arda, uh, the alchemist who is looking for additional uh, herbs for special potions. Uh, there is a, a call for uh, planters at a couple of the local gardens. They're looking for people who can help to prepare the farms. Seasonal work, um, not really uh, uh, ongoing work. So, those are the initial things you see on the board. The one with the disappearing cattle seems interesting. Yeah, um, I'm afraid I'm not much of a, a woods person. Um, so I don't know if I can help much with, uh, with finding the herbs, but... Uh, or, for that matter, logging or pearl diving. Uh, I'm not uh, not that good in the water, nor with an axe. Um, like it's really muted me. Boring. Sorry. <laughs> what um, was anything? <laughs> the the missing cattle seems to be the one that I'd also be more suited for. Oh, we should look that up then. Um, sorry, what was the name of the farmer for that? Which, what do we know about them? Uh, basically is a livestock farmer. Has a couple of uh, additional fields where they grow turnips and carrots. Um, small farm. Uh, looks like a family farm, if you recall. You don't see them very often. They don't come to town yeah. very often, and except in the fall to deliver their goods. Um, okay. Um, cows? Uh, cattle and uh, sheep okay. are the primary ones. At least that's all that's mentioned on here is the loss of cattle and sheep. All right. You know roughly where the area is. Yeah. Uh, it is a little bit out of town, um, and there is a rough road that leads in that direction. Is that where you guys are heading? Yeah, well, I'm going to go back to the inn and pick up my armor and everything. I've got a reputation to keep, you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll let I'll uh, tell him. Yeah, it's just uh, up the road that way, about uh, however long it is, hour or so. About an hour by walking, um, mostly just because it's kind of rough ground. Okay. 
Um, all right. Uh, you gather your, you make a change of clothing, Medric, into your more formal gear. Um, does Silas change at all, or? Uh, yes, Silas. I'm gonna fix this camera at some point. <laughs> Wrong direction. Uh, yeah, Silas changes into uh, well. Uh, I should see. He'd probably have keep some clothes because uh, he wouldn't be wearing his performing gear all the time. Uh, okay. So it, it might be this in, it might be a different in. Uh, but uh, actually, he probably just will come in and, and uh, give them a coin to keep an eye on his clothes while he's off performing. Uh, so he'd probably have a bag with them here. Yeah, Sandy wouldn't mind that. I mean, you do bring in customers occasionally when you perform here, and the service you just did also, all three of you, uh, gives you a bit yeah. of a discount. Um, so, yeah, he'd go and, and uh, like, in one of the back rooms or whatever and change into... Uh, his uh, 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 the normal like long coat and uh, other stuff that he carries around if he's going out of town somewhere. Okay. Does Andy change at all? No. She a, doesn't have much on her. Okay. You all gather to set out of outside of town. And you start walking down the main streets. It's uh, getting to be about mid morning at this point. Uh, most of the busy had happened already, although people are setting up for the midday markets uh, to sell what goods they have. Uh, you know, we're kind of around that same central square you guys have been before. Um, each of you make a, you know, we're, we're going to be doing uh, at some point Roll20 entirely. I don't think that uh, Medric is quite set up for that just yet. But I I'm assuming each of you have, point. sorry? I can just roll the basic D20. Yeah, you have your character sheet together though, right? Yeah, it's a well, physical character sheet on yep, a piece of yep, paper. That's fine. So each of you make a perception check as you're heading through town. Mm, let's see. And you can make it with so you can make it all 20 line out of the way. Uh, three. What was that? Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, yes, I got a seven. Oh, boy. And 11 from Medric. Okay. Um, there's quite an impressive hubbub going on in the central square. Silas, you're used to this uh, this particular setup, so you look around and with some satisfaction see uh, people setting up to uh, sell crafts and goods. Um, you're not sure if they're expecting any ships in today. Occasionally ships do come in uh, with people who are usually have been at sea for a while and are looking to take some uh, take some shore time uh, because they've been they've been traveling too long but aren't necessarily stopping here some people do stop to head on to pit of june or head on further in, uh, inland so there are some but there are some craft uh, works uh, out on display and the, some of the uh, some of the root vegetables they're looking a little bit rough this time of the year this is the last crops of the last year that have been in storage all this time uh, are being there there is uh, you do see uh, uh, saffron has a small stall there we're selling fresh bread that she made that morning as well uh, and otherwise uh, it's uh, it's mostly uh, uh, a simple market that's being set up but it's the one that's more, more or less set up just about every day uh, and you head out of town. Uh, it is overcast today, a little bit on the chilly side for spring, and as you travel further into the forest, uh, or further away from town, uh, it gets quieter and quieter, to the point where you're kind of climbing a little bit higher, and you can look down upon the town, which sits on kind of midway towards the, the, uh, the vast water of the bay. From this angle, you can also make out the uh, stone ridge which surrounds the town. Uh, it's essentially a water break. Um, while the tides rarely go over where the docks are and the very steep banks that are there, occasionally they do and the water flooding in would flood the town if they weren't careful. But they have an own ancient stone uh, ridge around the town itself. And you can see that there are a couple of boats that are out, way out at sea, waiting for the tide to get higher before they can come in. 
uh, smaller boats that have just been launched right off of the beach itself are, have already been uh, moving out. And uh, you can see the, the numerous vessels going out there. Looks like it might rain a little bit later on in the day. There's just that sort of sense out in the air, uh, almost fog building up a little bit around the edges of the, uh, of the bay. Um, far off to the uh, sort of south and east from where you are, you can just make out the edge of the lighthouse down there. Um, they have not turned on their light, but the dim light that's reflecting off of its, uh, its giant uh, dish at the top uh, just gives a little bit of glint. You can actually still see it, even though it's not lit up. In the far other end, uh, uh, fog and low cloud has surrounded uh, Cape Falcon. Uh, was it Cape Falcon? I think it was. Cape Raven. Cape Raven. I knew that. <laughs> it's new. All new. Uh, Cape Raven uh, kind of shrouding it now in a bit of mist. Uh, and its light similarly does not seem to be on. The, uh, the pathway here is uh, a road. At least that's the name they're going to give to it. It's little more than a uh, two-rutted pathway, which uh, has been used for probably generations. A uh, bit of stone added here and there uh, to uh, to fill it in a little bit. It's on the edge of the upper ridge around town um, for about uh, ten minutes before starting to head inward towards the forest. Forest here is uh, an evergreen. lying across the road. Um, looks like it fell sometime during the night, maybe? Not really sure. Okay. Hmm. Does it look like it fell intentionally, or some, somebody made it fall intentionally? Uh, make an investigation check as you can walk right. up to the edge of the, the forest and take a look at the log. Oh boy. <laughs> investigation is not my jam, but I will try as soon as I find roll. You can also make nature. I would accept that. Is it like a, a tree that was knocked over or just a log? Like, is it something we can step over? It's a, it's a tree, so it hasn't okay. been cleared of branches or anything like that. Okay. A uh, fairly large one, probably about, uh, I want to say, 35 feet tall. And that actually wasn't a bad roll <laughs> for a minus one modifier. So 17? Yeah. Okay. You start poking around and following a little bit deeper into the woods. The the woods are very dense along the sides of this road. Uh, and while they probably were cleared out uh, when they put the road through or when they tried to put the road through, um, the trees have been growing closer and closer back to the woods, reclaiming the space. So it's a bit of a, of a thick uh, thicket as you uh, uh, travel inward. And you look at the uh, the edge of the uh, branch and kind of push, you dig, you're kind of digging deep into the woods to try to, or into the wood itself, the, the evergreen branch is just scratching against you and you kind of push in. And you uh, uh, see uh, on the, sorry? That was investigation, not nature. Okay. They're both minus one, but I just thought I'd specify. <laughs> nope, that's fine. Uh, as you look in and you look at the uh, the edge of the uh, piece of wood, or the edge of the tree, I should say, uh, and can very clearly see that there are cut marks that are there. And I'd like all of you to make perception checks. Hey, somebody knocked this over on purpose with something sharp. Ooh, okay. Hey! I would also like to point out that I do have the alert feet, so I can't be surprised. Cool. Woo. Wow. Nice. Okay. None of you are surprised anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as uh, lurking on the sides of the trees, um, poised to fire arrows, um, Medrick, you kind of say, "Hey, this this has been." This has been cut on purpose. And you start looking around. You look up and you can see someone sitting in the tree above you. Uh, Annie, you're getting a bad feeling about this as Medrick is traveling in there towards the edge of the tree. And Silas, this glint, kind of like, kind of like sunlight reflecting off of something shiny, but it's not a sunny day. But it catches your eye. And you look in that direction. It... it... Yeah, I'll have to make a dex check because for for whatever reason, 
It has changed my initi initiative modifier to 1.12. Oh, actually, that's in, that's intentional. That is to break ties. Your your dex has been added as a decimal to the end of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Medrick gets a four. He's too busy, like, getting out of the bushes. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of kind of strung into the uh, the bushes themselves. Shield. <laughs> Would you like me to add the initiative for or the decks for tiebreakers in initiative? I said it on as a global option, I guess. Uh, <laughs> literally everything stopped moving for me. Um, I'm amazed in the background that uh, you guys could still hear me on the other end, and apparently uh, things were were working technically, except for the fact that I could do nothing. <laughs> This Amen. is one of the reasons that usually I have multiple machines running. So at least if I have multiple machine running, something will be working. But in any case, we're backing back to an opening combat where uh, a downed log has prevented you guys from traveling across the road. And when you went to investigate, you discovered there were bandits waiting for the whoever happened to be stumbling along. However, you guys spotted them in time and are ready. Uh, from what I have, uh, I've, I've re-rolled their initiative, but it doesn't matter because you guys are going first anyway. Uh, in particular, uh, if I have it written down right, Medrick, you had 22 for your initiative. No, that was, uh, perception. That was perception. Okay. Initiative was four. Was <laughs> four. Okay, well, I have to, I have to reset that. Because I thought, wow, how did you go so fast? All right, well, we're going to, uh, let's see if I can check. I might need to... I uh, might need to reset this thing here. First time using the combat tracker on D and D Beyond. It's pretty fun though. I will say. All right, save. Let's see if we can run the encounter. And I just need to type everybody's initiative again. I'm sorry that I'm narrating. It's what I do when I'm. There we go. So I'm going to re-roll their initiative. So now we really know what's happening. Uh, the person going first, though, is no surprise. It is Silas. He's had just a glimpse of an extra bit of warning. Hmm. Well, um, how far away are these guys? So the road isn't very wide. Uh, it's probably about 10 feet wide, and then it starts the trees. So the trees themselves are probably 20 feet high and they've all seemed to have secreted themselves. You notice that there are, look like two on each side. So probably about 20 feet away, really. Okay. Um, and did we see how many there were? Or... Uh, yes, actually. Uh, well, Annie didn't notice. Annie knew there was trouble. Uh, Annie got her gun. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, I just but, expect uh, people see. to attack me. <laughs> but both you and uh, and Medric, uh, Medric in particular, because you're used to combat situations, you've been ambushed before. Once you realize that, hey, this has been cut down, it's an ambush. You look around, sure enough, and with your trained eyes, you can <laughs> easily see. Yeah, one one right above you, uh, only about 10 feet up, really, in the tree. Uh, and then another one on the same side. Uh, you look across the road, you can note the other two. Silas, each of them seemed to have been pointed out by that little glint you saw before. Uh, it was the glint off of the uh, the steel arrowheads they're using, or the metal arrowheads, probably not steel. Um, okay, but there's four of them that I see? Okay. Yes, two on each side. Yeah. Um, uh... I hate to do this right off, but uh, I... You can always take a defensive yeah, action. No, um, <laughs> I am going to give them a dread gaze. Uh, oh, geez, okay. And I have to look up the spell because I've got to print everything out. But uh, <laughs> yeah, they... An eight. So yeah, neither one of them succeed. Okay, they're both afraid of me. Uh, this is concentration up to one minute. Okay, and they have fear, so that's uh, disadvantage on attacks and saves, I believe. Uh, yeah, as long as they but... can see me, I think. Yeah, and can't, do any... can't move any closer. Okay, sounds good. 
So, yes, uh, describe what your dread gaze looks like as you look away from the others. Well, the uh, Annie and Medrick probably don't see it because I'm looking in the opposite direction from them. Uh, but, yes, they were the... Uh, uh, the two bandits would probably see things kind of get a little darker around uh, Silas and then just his eyes don't look all that different, but to them, they look terrifying um, as the spell reaches out and washes over their uh, amygdalas. Damn, he's scary for a little dude. From the other side, uh, um, where uh, Silas is paying attention, uh, everybody can hear the two on that side just give loud shouts of surprise. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to think of an appropriate epithet, but essentially, what in the what in the what in the blazes is that? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it is one of their turns. <laughs> and the way that you're going to uh, react to this is by letting loose the arrow it had uh, it had released. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, but uh, not happily. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. It's going to be bad. Uh, oh, actually, that's a 15 to hit. That's a hit. All right. Um, where's my... Uh, and I'm just rolling old school dice here at the moment. That's the wrong die. Where am I? Rolling old school dice I can't even find. Here we go. <laughs> Five points of piercing damage as an arrow slices through Ow. Silas. Ow. Uh, and you can hear a little bit of skittering in the trees as it seems like they're trying to move away somehow. Oh, and I need a uh, concentration, concentration save. save. Or concentration check. concentration check. Go. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Uh... Yeah, this is all sorts of not good. Oh, hey, 15. Nice. All right, no problem. That's good. Uh, the confidence of the fact that it does seem like the person is scrambling out of the tree to run away is probably helping. Run away! Uh, now it is Annie's turn. You can see in, uh, right beside you, uh, Silas has been pierced by an arrow. Um, I am going to reach onto my back and grab my short bow. And... Uh, I am going to uh, shoot the one that just shot Silas. Okay. Uh, so that is 23. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a hit. Yeah. Uh, so that is five damage. All right. Um, and as my bonus action, I'm going to give Silas advantage on his next attack. How are you doing that? Um, I'm going to, uh, tell him that he's got this, because he's got it. Okay. He's going very... Get that guy! <laughs> Do the thing! Do it good! Get him there! <laughs> All right. Hit him on so... his body somewhere. <laughs> um, and I'm going to distance myself a little bit from the rest of the group. Okay. Moving kind of back away from the tree, I'm assuming, down the road? Or uh, the trees. Yeah, I'm going to back up a little bit and step into the trees a little bit for a bit of cover. Okay. okay. Um, stepping into which side? The side where um, you've been firing and the one that fired is Silas or the side where Medrick is? Uh, I will go on to the side where Me Medrick isn't. Okay. Yep, that's where you were shooting and that's where Silas got shot as well. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you back up a little bit from there. Uh, the other one on the same side as you guys, uh, will, let's see, um, I think because he's also rattled, he's still going to fire at Silas. Uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, haha, we've got them on. Oh my God. What the hell is that thing? <laughs> shoot it. Shoot it. Oh, shoot it badly. Uh, that is a seven to hit. That does not hit. As the arrow plunks into the ground beside you. Uh, and again, uh, you can hear and actually see a little bit of him scrambling to try to get out of the tree. Uh, and he's not far away from you, but not quite within striking range. Uh, as he's scrambling to get out of the tree. That means it is Medric's turn. All right. I'm assuming the bad guys are not going to appear on the roll 20? 
No, I'm not going to use roll 20 for this okay. particular combat. I'm not really ready for that yet. No worries. Uh, so I'm still getting out of the bushes. I'm assuming it's going to be difficult terrain for like five feet or something. Yeah, to, to get back in to, onto the road if you want to, if you're going to be moving through the forest, it's also difficult terrain in there. Yeah. This is very thick. And how and close is the nearest one to me? Uh, from you, only about uh, uh, 10 feet up, really. The crossing distance isn't that much, but the 10 feet up is important. Yeah. Kind of yeah. lodges himself in the branch of the tree. On the ground? None of them are on the ground, though. They're all in trees. All of them? Yep. Okay. Well, in that uh, case, I will pick up my light crossbow and just fire a shot at him, the one right next to me. Or 10 feet above me. And I believe light crossbow is D6. D6 for damage, probably, yes. Yeah. Uh, light crossbow is D8 for damage. Oh, okay. okay. What is my modifier? A proficiency? Okay. No. So 11 to hit, which is terrible. Uh, that exactly hits. Okay. <laughs> oh, low levels. They're so much fun. <laughs> and do I apply my, uh, modifiers to that or no? Oh, wait, sorry. Which side are you sitting on? The other side. Uh, that actually does miss. Sorry. Okay. Curses. Uh, is the one beside you. You see him kind of, uh, wearing what looks like, uh, a, a, a little bit of chain mail, just enough to, to, uh, to sort of make it a glancing miss. And as a bonus action, I'll just swear something in Orcish and grab my shield. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that's you are going to move at all? Yeah, I'll go back on the road. Okay. So you move back out on the road, get yourself ready to defend. Uh, that one uh, uh, kind of grins, and you see him uh, pull out a fairly uh, large sword. Um Kind of, it's a long sword. It's not a fancy sword, but it does look like it's well kept. the The edge of the blade has a particular sheen to it, uh, and he kind of grins as he hops down from the tree. Oh, the shit's dime, interesting. sorry, <laughs> shit's about to get interesting now. <laughs> as uh, he steps forward, the diamond wants to deliver a message, especially to the three of you. Don't interfere in his business. Now, when the uh, fellow who had the hat gave up a name. He didn't give up a real name. He called him the Diamond, uh, presumably some sort of local crime boss. So you get the impression that this was not uh, a necessarily just a random strike. Who's so, the Diamond? So the uh, Diamond is the the name of the crime no. boss that the I mean, guy like, who had the hat. The NPC, was Are the you asking him? Yeah, he's not going to answer that. Uh, he's given his he's given his two sen two sentences of words. Now he gets to strike as he as he moves forward to strike you with a long bow. Long sword. Uh, uh, sorry, long sword. Yes, yeah. he strikes you with a long bow. That would be kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, that is a thirteen to hit. I got nineteen AC with the shield up. Yeah, no problem. Clangs off the shield, but is a it's a heavy blow. Uh, he's got a lot of heft behind it, but just didn't quite manage to get fast enough to get around your shield. Uh, that's his action. The other one. The other one is not getting down from the tree, uh, <laughs> but it is going to fire a crossbow at you. Uh, let's see. Which one of us is you? Is it me? Uh, at Medric. Okay. That is exactly a 19 to hit, actually. Oh. So while you're kind of swinging the, the, uh, the, the shield upward and successfully knocking aside the, 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 uh, the sword, it gives him a little bit of a, of a chance to, to uh, pump a, a, a crossbow bolt right into your side for seven points of damage. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I can track this on here, too. I forgot that. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. I will figure this out eventually. All right. Uh, you guys are keeping track of your, of your HP, not me. Yep. I have no idea where you're at. All right. Uh, that is their turn. Back around at the top. That would be Silas. The two of them both seem to be rattled. They're both they both out of the trees at this point, but haven't quite made it farther away. Uh, hmm. I am going to uh, 
Enchant by Staff. Uh, and power it up with a bonus action with okay. my enchanted staff spell. I named all my spells. Um, <laughs> he was homeschooled. It's, it's, it's... <laughs> yep. Um, and I want to kind of like faint towards the two guys that I have uh, feared and try okay. to intimidate them to run away. Okay. Uh, make an intimidation roll. I'll oh. give you advantage. Actually, I don't use... Uh, I don't cast Shillelagh because I've already got a concentration spell going. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm pretty sure that's a concentration one. Um, I believe so, yeah. Uh, so, yes, I will just try to intimidate them. All right. Uh, I guess it, bon or, uh, advantage on the intimidation because they're already afraid, and, afraid of you. Hey! Oof, okay. Let's see. I'm scared the crap out of these guys. Even, even defend against that. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's. Yeah, the two of them take off running. Well, well, they they turn, they kind of drop their bows and start running. Okay, I'm okay with that. Um, are you going to move at all? Mm, no. Okay. Uh, yeah the the one that's uh that shot at you the first time, uh, just drops the bow, turns tail, runs uh, deeper into the uh, into the forest. You can hear him kind of crashing wildly through the forest. Uh, that puts it to Annie's turn. The other one looks like he's also about to do the same, just sort of crash through the forest on that side. Um, uh, I am going to use my bonus action to hide. Okay. I'm going to just dip into the forest there. Yo. Uh, probably not. You're totally hidden. Totally. Absolutely. That tree is big enough to hide two of you. <laughs> I feel that I forgot to attack, like she said. So I, I'm not much of an attacker. Hey. Um, I am going to then shoot the one that's on the ground. Okay. The one that hasn't had a chance to run away yet. Yeah. Or not, okay. not the the guy. Right oh, the one that's attacking uh, Medrick. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Seems to be somewhat aware of you. No. Uh, and uh, just sort of shrugs at the right time and kind of leans in almost towards Medrick, half using Medrick's own shield as a way to kind of hide himself. Uh, and the bow goes wide. Uh, I'm just going to shove him back like, hey, social distancing, six feet. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Marshall distance. Sorry, I think is what you're really keeps referring like to. jumping onto the bed, spooking herself, and then running out and like, like cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that seems to be good. Okay. Well, that was unexpected. As they have been, um, I don't even remember where we were. <laughs> I it. think uh, I had attacking us. <laughs> One of them grabbed a hold of my shield, and I'm like, "No, get out!" After Annie, right? Any just yeah, any just attacks. So would be the next guy up. The guy who was the spokesperson essentially for this group, with his long sword in hand. All right, let's see if I can manage to get through a round without. Having everything crash. Uh, and I just threw my die away, so I think I'll use a spare that I got here. Uh, that is a 25 to hit, though. That's pretty good. Uh, oh, max down the damage. So uh, you take 10 slashing damage. Me? Yes. Okay. Where is uh, as as the uh, as having leaned up underneath the shield, sees an opportunity, swings back and upward, catching you across the chest, uh, and uh, the uh, shield find or the sword finds some purchase on the inside of your left arm where your shield is, uh, causing a nasty wound across the inside. Okay, well that's not good. And the other one, the other one is going to uh, let's see. I think double up on you, because you're the uh, only one, well, 
actually no, actually going to fire across uh, because it does know that Annie is there. Uh, Annie was totally behind, totally behind totally. the tree. And <laughs> sure, the tree was like this massive thing which was going to totally protect her. Uh, I kind of like uh, Pat's cat. Oh, that's a nat 20. As the arrow goes swinging across, and it's a really lousy roll, which kind of sucks. Uh, that is four points of piercing damage on a crit. That's mm -hmm. disappointing. Uh, as the uh, arrow goes flying through and kind of right through the branches that were just beside your head and kind of nicks you across the across the neck, leaving a nasty kind of scratchy wound that is kind of bleeding a little bit. Uh, if, if it had been one inch to one side or the other, that would have been in your throat. But they're not that good, apparently. Uh, it is It is now Medric's turn. Right. There's a satisfied look on the on the warrior standing in front of you, the one who uh, was warning you about the diamond. <laughs> trying to debate whether I'm feeling bad enough to like heal myself or feeling angry enough to like just smash the guy. <laughs> These are the things which to, which uh, most war clerics have to face. Ah, at decisions. One point. Which thing am I angriest at the most? Diamond jackass in front of me, probably. So. I will swing a warhammer in the general direction of his face. Oops, no, that's not All right. He's preferring his face not to be hit, but we'll see. Two. Hey, do I add my strength bonus or? Yes. Yes, for a warhammer, you do. Plus proficiency. Okay, so that's plus five. Wait. Right, roll to hit first. I knew that. To hit, it's, it's, to hit, it's only proficiency, right? Uh, it would be your no, your strength bonus on on a on a melee weapon. Yep. It's weird really? how we forget all the fundamentals already. Ooh, unfortunately, the heavy weapon goes sailing over his head as he ducks quite nimbly, laughing a little bit as he, as he gets by you. If there's a party wipe on the first encounter, I'm going to cry. <laughs> hey, it's only supposed to be a short-term game. Define short. <laughs> One. <laughs> One bonus action. action. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you have a bonus uh, action I, you want to do? Or... I don't think so. Okay. If you move, you would get an opportunity attack, but you could move anyway. Yeah, it'll just catch up to me afterwards, so I might as well just stay put. Or can I okay. stand defensively as a... Bonus action, or I mean, not unless you have something in your class that allows you to do that. Most there are fighter elements that allow you to do something like that. Yeah. You have the shield, though. So hopefully, he rolls crappy next time. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, too, with the warhammer, I believe it can be used yeah, one or two handed. If you have the shield up, it has to be yeah. the one handed version. So, okay, uh -oh. Silas, you can see your friend is uh, your new friend is being somewhat overwhelmed by mm. this warrior. Uh, I, uh, crap, silent too. Well, I will harpoon the psyche. I am like you might. Um, Let's see, he has a staff. Um, his staff is probably made for his show as well, so it looks a little showy. It's not just a regular quarter staff. Uh, in this case, hmm, I think it's like the, the staff momentarily looks like it's plated with, uh, oh, I don't know, dragon scales or something. Uh, and then it kind of okay. soaks into the staff. Uh, because I don't think it leaves an actual visual thing, but uh, but yes, then I will run up and attempt to club the guy that's trying to stab my f my my recent friend. Uh, that is with the natural twenty powered staff. Oops, there we go. Uh, that is an eleven. 
Yeah, I fortunately, again, uh, with some deft footsteps, he manages to just sort of shift his his weight enough to be out of your range and now kind of seeing the two of you and facing off against them. Doesn't seem to be terribly concerned about the two of you together. Yep. Uh, that's but, uh, it that's is it for me. One, which is tough for him. All right. All right. Crashing through the woods, we now have one who is vanished. He's still afraid and decided this was not worth the meager amount of money he was being paid. Uh, the other one uh, has dropped his bow as well. Um, hmm. And yes, Annie, you <laughs> hear him kind of vanishing off into the woods. Uh, make a perception check, Annie. Mm. Oh, look, a decent roll. You'll have to tell me that. You'll have to tell me because I can't. I don't know if I want to dare look at uh, the roll 20 at the moment. 16? Okay. You notice that while both of them seem to charge off into the woods, after a few seconds, they stop and there's no sound of them moving again. They're not gone. But you don't see yeah. them where you are. It is um, your turn. I'm going to join this fight. Uh, I am going to swap my short bow for my rapier and attack the guy. Uh, does a 16 hit? Uh, 16 cool. is exactly a hit. So uh, that is eight damage for the rapier, and I have people beside him, so sneak attack would be another seven. Oof. As you kind of come okay. diving in, he's he's dodging and weaving and kind of seeing the putting the two of them in the right motions. But you see that exact opening, kind of jumping in between the, th the two of the others, and kind of around the shield where he can't really see it coming. Stab inward, uh, and you see in front of you Medric as the rapier finds a solid hole right through all those little ringlets of chainmail, uh, stabbing him solidly in the chest. He kind of steps back, ugh, and you can see the blood starting to pool on his chest. He is not looking happy about this three-on-one. And uh, with my bonus action, I'm going to give uh, Medric uh, advantage on his next attack. Ha ha! This going to be good. All right. Well, he's there in front I of set you. Set him up for you. That's what he's going to try to do. Now it's Medric's turn to grin uh, at the guy. Hmm. He raises his sword and says, this isn't over, but then proceeds to back away. <laughs> He's going to disengage and turn to move into the woods. Cover me. Do we still see him? Uh, you will still see him until he gets into the woods, and then you'll have to make a perception check to see him. It's slow going through there, and you can hear him crashing through. Uh, meanwhile, the other one that's still in the tree uh, fires down at well, the one with the big shield, because honestly, that's the most scary one, even though it's the one that didn't do the most damage just yet. Practice swings. Oh, uh, well, yeah, that's still only a, um, where is he here? That's a seven to hit, so I'm pretty <laughs> sure that just bounces off the shield. And you see him kind of climbing out of the tree, and then when the other guy leaves, he's turning tail and running as well. So, it is Medric's turn. You can chase him. Do I still them. see him? You do. Um, they haven't been able to get that far away in the, foot, in the woods, but it is difficult to Well, uh, yeah. uh, You will be able to catch up with the one that had the crossbow, the one that was just firing, because he wasn't able to get far enough away to be yeah. outside of your range. But they're all, they all look like they're running away, though, right? They do. The one I was fighting, I'm going to cast Hold Person on him. That's okay. sort of All a right. level two spell. DC is... So roll, uh, roll your D6 yeah. plus two. Dice roller. I wish I had a mouse on this computer. Oh, never mind that. That's a D20. Ignore that. Wow. <laughs> and of Ooh, course, it was actually a nice roll. Okay, so I take two damage. Okay. 
and uh, let's see, wisdom save, yeah. huh? That should be funny. The DC is only twelve, All though, because right. I'm not super wise. <laughs> oh, roll oh, man. You see him kind of, kind of uh, slow down a little bit, look back with this confused look on his face. As he looks back, and all of you standing right there notice there is this nimbus of fire which erupts around uh, Medric temporarily, uh, leaving his, uh, his hair a little singed and a little bit of wisps of smoke uh, up above him uh, as he kind of has a visage, if you will, of Ignis for a moment. Uh, the guy looks back, sees that, and then just continues to barrel on. Kill him, I'll tell my friends. Uh, uh, it is Silas's turn. You can still see him barely through the woods. Uh, actually, make a perception check, or it's going to be uh, difficult to, to, to see. Uh, and over here. 21. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow, I keep rolling okay. tw yeah. natural 20s with my plus one perception. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, you can clearly make, it, make him out through the woods. It's difficult to get to him from where you are. He's had a full round of movement, essentially, even though it's been... Okay, so this is the guy. This is the guy with the sword. Who's okay, the one with the cane. The, he's the one deeper in. The other one is still only about uh, 15 feet deep into the forest, but it is hard to get through that. How forest. badly hurt did the guy with the, the in the uh, armor seem to be running away? Uh, there was a big bloom of, of red around where Annie had stabbed him right in the middle of his chest. And he definitely had a very uh, pained look on his face. So pretty wounded. Okay. And the uh, the other guy who uh, is... The other guy with the crossbow on that side, not, okay. not harmed at all. I am going to mind spike that guy, which means I'm dropping the fear okay. on the other two. Uh, and so I have that one here. Uh, 60 foot range or she bought more than enough target makes a wisdom save all right here we go with the wisdom saves again that okay does not beat my 13 so he takes 3d8 psychic damage uh Ooh. where is that because i have that set up but it didn't roll the damage dang it oh wait can i Oh, it did. Sorry, that's the fifteen. So it took fifteen psychic damage. Was that the guy oh, running away? Uh, that was the cross. That was the guy with the crossbow in the tree who was running away. Not the one you would you would try okay. to uh, to hold. No. Uh, yeah, he uh, he looks at you and his eyes just go wide, and all of you see this this look just of terror freeze his uh, face in place. His eyes sink deep. And they kind of roll back in his in his head, and he just collapses to the ground, uh, kind of moaning and screaming all at once. Uh, that was not what was intended, but um, uh, so he's he's still alive. I mean, you can go uh, check. Well, I mean, like, uh, you said he's still, you said he's still moving. Well, he collapsed to the ground okay. where he was standing. And kind of moaning okay. as he went down. Uh, well, if he is uh, still alive, uh, on a failed save, I always, I also always know the target's location until the spell ends, as long as we're in the same plane of existence. Okay. Well, you yep. can see him. He's right there. <laughs> but he does not appear to be uh, showing up on your mental radar. Uh, well, movement-wise, yeah. <laughs> I'm next to him. Okay, you walk up next to him. You can see there's bits and flecks of foam forming uh, forming around his his mouth as the last breath leaves him. Well, I uh, huh. I kneel down and uh, just uh, actually, well, basically, just as my bonus action, I'll just say a, uh, something about his soul and the afterlife and. Uh, Go in peace. Are you attempting some sort uh, of prayer? Sort of. I mean, I didn't mean to kill the guy. 
uh, so it's like, uh, um, okay, may your spirit go on to a greater place and better condition. Sorry. You're praying wrong. <laughs> Probably, yes. I didn't mean to kill him. Uh, they would have tried to kill us. Yeah, but I was trying to track them back to their hiding spot. <laughs> That's it for me anyways. Okay. So. All right. Um, each of you can make a perception check. You'll have to tell me what they are because I'm, <laughs> I'm not changing windows. Everything is working at the moment. Not I don't one. move anything. Oh, no. I got a 12. Eighteen. Nice. Eighteen. As you're looking after the one who's still crashing off into the woods, you hear a small snap of a twig behind you, Medrick. And you glance over your shoulder and you see the other two have returned to pick up their bows. <coughs> and you're kind of like sneaking slowly <coughs> and there's snap from one of them and you see them just sort of look up at the, mm -hmm. th the three of you. Kind of half freeze. But they haven't picked up the uh, it is uh, it is uh, Annie's turn. Oh. You can see that Medrick is looking in the opposite direction, but otherwise you don't notice anything. I mean, my friends, it's like, hey, they're back. Sort of, yeah, what? sure. And I mean, I heard that they had stopped. Like they keep running. So. That's true. Uh, I'm going to look in that direction. Okay. Uh, you can't quite make them out, but you do see that one of the bows is moving. Uh, it was very good stealth rolls on their case, and yep. you rolled a natural one, so. <laughs> um, I am going to, um, why not? I'm going to give Medric advantage on his next roll, or his next attack roll against, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, I am going to dash into the the forest towards the bow. Um, okay. You sort of crash into the edge yep. of the forest. Um, I'm going to use my dash as a bonus action to get there without the difficult terrain. Uh, so that okay. I can do 30 feet of movement. Yep, you dash in and kind of hop around the branches and kind of find those little spaces you can dive through. Kind of imagine that, um, you know, ultra, ultra uh, 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 kung fu esque kind of weaving and dodging cool. and dancing, and then you're face to face with one of them you can see right cool. in front of you. Uh, I will be stepping on the bow uh, okay. and attack him with a rapier. Well, you can either step on the bow or you can attack because both are basically an attack. Grappling the bow or you're going to... Okay, sure. Uh, I'll attack with the rapier. No, I won't. Okay. Eight. <laughs> What'd you roll? Eight, unfortunately, no. As you're kind of trying to step on, on the, in the bow, he kind of draws it back and up and kind of snaps the rapier aside. His eyes look kind of wild and, and desperate. Um, didn't they kind of expect that you'd Catch up to him. Yeah. But he's right in front of you right now. That guy is crashing off to the woods. The sound of the biggest guy that you were facing uh, diminishes as he gets further and further into the woods. That guy's dead. Silas. Is it my turn? Uh, oh. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I didn't <laughs> scroll down. Yes. Have they both picked up the yes. weapons? The ones in the woods? Uh, uh yes yes one of them is is further well they're both a little bit further in uh but you can see where annie is standing and the other one also picked up his weapon okay so the one that's not next to annie i will scream at the top of my lungs like drop your weapon and cast command at level one okay what uh what kind of role is that was uh dc12 wisdom save yep 
That Woo. is a four. So he throws down the uh, the bow, kind of throws it down the ground, then looks at his own hand, kind of in confusion. And I'll walk as far as I can towards him. Oh, uh, is that a uh, one plus ball with that? So roll your d6 hmm? plus ball. Oh, right, right. I keep looking for my physical dice, and I don't have them. <laughs> it's weird. What's going on? Really? So that's three. <laughs> as a burst of flame uh, raises around your, your weapon and you as you point towards him, probably emphasizing your point quite nicely. Uh, and yes, he drops the weapon, uh, kind of, again, still looking at his hand, but also kind of looking at you on... on temporary After he stops looking at me and focuses on himself and isn't looking at me, I'll just kind of like stagger and hold onto a tree and push myself back up and, and walk towards him. <laughs> Okay. Uh, it is heavy going through the woods at this point, though. Uh, that would be Silas's turn. So one of them has stopped and thrown down his weapon. The other one's standing toe to toe with Annie, but holding his weapon, holding both weapons, really. Hmm. Some sort of curved uh, sword, and the in the other hand, his his longbow. Hmm. Shoot. I think of what I can do. Uh, actually, not much. I'm going to get out my crossbow and load it. Uh, nice. And I'll move across the road over closer to where they are. Okay. It would be partial cover if you're firing into the woods because it's sure. woods. But I can't fire yet, anyways. I have to load first. Okay. Okay. Uh, that gets to be their turn. Uh, let's see. Well, the one that uh, is facing toe to toe to Annie does not want to face toe to toe to Annie, and proceeds to uh, kind of use the bow as a way to defend themselves. Uh, will disengage and start moving away deeper into the into the woods trying to uh trying to move forward but also trying to look back at the same time to see where annie is because she came so quickly through the forest uh but doesn't seem to be uh very hopeful <laughs> that way the other one however will just start tearing off through the woods uh and gets about twice as far as he pushes on through you can see that uh they seem to have some idea of what these woods are like and not entirely dissimilar to Annie are having an easier time moving around uh, but uh, uh, not getting that far away still that's their turn uh, Annie, uh, I'm up. going to continue moving forward towards the one that I've been fighting okay yeah you're easy able to catch up to him and he keeps kind of trying to trying to move away and yep. you're right there um, getting fairly deep into the forest at this point the light is pretty dim uh, how far did I get? Did I manage to get, do I need to dash to get it? You got, uh, if you, to avoid the, to, to get so, to him doing sorry, how does it work? You, if you dash, yeah. yeah, if you do it with the dash, yeah. you'd be able to catch up. Uh, break your neck. 13. 13 is a Ooh, hit. That's 10 damage. Ooh. Ouch. Uh, yeah, he tries to block it with the uh, the short bow, and the short bow kind of uh, doesn't provide any resistance against a rapier because the rapier kind of bounces around it, uh, stabbing him nastily in the shoulder. You can see him kind of wince a bit and give a little cry. Please, please. I didn't mean it. I was just paid. Uh, that's your turn. Nope. Uh, those two are gone, and uh, that okay. puts it back to Medrick. I look like shit right now. <laughs> so I just want to make sure I got the right dice number. Really? Okay. Right. Um, it doesn't say on the sheet. If I'm casting a healing spell on myself, does the Ignis fire damage happen before or after the HP is applied? It happens after. Remember, you don't yeah. resist. I, I am having the. I am like cutting the numbers by okay. half. Okay. Okay. So I, 
Uh, actually, I would say with healing spells that there's no, there's no, uh, no, actually does does apply for them. Okay. Yeah, never mind. So I will cast a level two healing, uh, you know, cure wounds on myself because I have two HP left. <laughs> AKA I look like shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo! So that's a nice number. Nice. How much did you get? Back? Fifteen. Oh, that is nice. Wow, that's really nice, actually. Yeah, so I'm back at 17, which is a lot better than 2. Really? I keep rolling max damage. Ignis hates me. <laughs> so now I'm back down to 13. <laughs> so yes, you kind of glow brightly with flame that forms over uh, you. Uh, and too then, bright, ow, too ow, bright. Ow, Cut it off. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> And your armor kind of has this little glow of heat around it. Uh, let's see. That's your turn. And back around to Silas. Uh, okay. Can I see the one that ran further away from, uh, from Annie? That'll be a perception check. He's quite okay. deep in the woods at this point. Uh... Nope. So if you have to roll, it'll be with it with disadvantage. If he gets to roll, it's with advantage. Uh, he's about sixty feet away at this point. Well, yeah, because if I can, okay, because if I can, if I know where he is, I guess, and this would apply. Um, I am going to. Uh, uh, is that? Oh, we have that. Um, yeah. I am going to make him see uh, Annie suddenly popping up in front of him and scaring the bejesus out of him. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Is yeah, it's a good range or... of 60 feet. So I don't okay. know how far he is. is that but, a... uh, He's about 60 feet away, so... Um... What uh, is that a save? I, well, it's, uh, there's an ink check to see through illusions, so I assume that's okay. So he'll he'll have advantage on that one when it comes yeah. to his turn, uh... um, which is actually right now. Uh, but you have the option to move or bonus. Action. Um, I will move. Uh, a... I will start moving into the woods uh, in Annie's direction. Okay. It is difficult terrain, so uh, yep. it costs uh, additional double movement, basically. Okay, you'll get about 15 feet in, about half the way to where Annie is at yep. this point. Uh, let's see if he can see through the illusion. That's pretty good. That's not as good. So their bonus is zero, so that's a 12. Not quite enough. I have a 13. Okay. Uh, he definitely sees her back uh, pop and slow up there. his getaway. It's all stupid. Um, he, yeah, he's not going to go no, back. But he might uh, stop. He might stop going directly away from us. But he's yeah. going to angle at this particular case. Yeah, so uh, he's going to dive off in another direction. Uh, however, he's uh, able to move fairly quickly uh, because he's less hindered uh, by these yep. particular forests. Uh, the other one, Toto -to versus Annie. Uh, at this point, he's just going to try to hoof it. That does give you an opportunity to attack Annie as he basically uh, just turns I and I am runs. not going to attack him, but I am going to say, I better not see your face again. No, no ma'am. In a very stern, direct, like, <laughs> military order way. Make a... Make an intimidation roll. Roll it with advantage. As you Annie is him. judging him. Hardcore. <laughs> 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 Judge Annie. Not 20, so 22. What was it? <laughs> Jeez. Guys. <laughs> so, yeah, you can hear him kind of like, no, no, never seen you again. Nope, 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 nope. Kind of wanting to run off into the forest. Uh, that's back around to your turn, um, actually. 
I am going to hide and take a defensive stance. Okay. You don't see anybody else, uh, actually, except for Silas, who's kind of uh, walking through the woods behind yep. you. Um, just in case something else shows up, though, I'm just going to hide and ready an attack of something. Okay. Oh, How was your I, sneak roll? Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, crashing through the wilderness. I figured Silas was being noticed, but what about Annie? A whole eight. Back to single digits. Eight. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, so successfully shouted that apparently the reverberations are keeping you well uh, vis visible by everybody. Uh, as we go back around to Medric, you can hear any shout, but then she vanishes from sight inside the woods. Do I see anybody you can hide that hide. isn't Silas or Annie still around? Uh, you can kind of perceive where they are, but they're getting to be pretty far away. You make a perception check to even notice where they are. Let me precision. Changing dice type. <laughs> 15. Yeah. 15? You vaguely know where uh, the one uh, that uh, Silas had... Uh, kind of pointed and a little a little Annie kind of appeared briefly. Uh, you kind of know the direction he's in, but it's very difficult. You can't really see him so much as fleeting glimpses and a little bit of sound. As but it sounds through. definitely like, like they're running away, correct? All of them. Definitely. At All right. This point, it looks I'll like just uh, be extra careful and use my action to like be defensive, I guess. Or stance. Okay. After a moment, do you realize that all of the? What's I'll that? just start heading back towards the road because I'm assuming Sorry. that I'm assuming they all left. Okay. After a moment or two, your suspicions are pretty well uh, well realized as no further sounds seem to be coming. After a few more crashes through the through the woods, it looks as though you've not only successfully defended yourself but scared the the Jesus out of everyone as they go crashing through the woods. You find yourselves back on the road, probably. Yeah, I'd head back there after. Yeah. Ugh, bastards. Okay. And I'll look at like all the holes that are in my armor <laughs> and in my skin. <laughs> what kind uh, of armor do you wear? Split mail. Okay, yeah. It's probably uh, yeah a little bit of repair will be needed on it. Not not substantial enough to change the AC, but uh, it it needs some good cleaning. I mean, your armor has seen a lot of beating anyway because yeah. that's the nature of a soldier but there would be a ritual kind of of cleaning it off mm. most days anyway the tree's still across the uh, across the road still pretty much a hazard yeah, at least ignis direction. is nice enough to like cauterize all my wounds as they happen like shortly after they happen you don't believe <laughs> sure me, that's sure. uh yeah yeah that's nice the positive side of things <laughs> the only one that you still see there is the uh is the absolutely gaunt faced one that had the crossbow uh, kind of slumped along outside the tree where he had been just momentarily getting away until face down by Sil Silas and uh, scared to death looks like what did you do I just I mean I cast a spell that causes some some mental harm and lets me track him for the next hour well uh, <laughs> apparently he was uh, somewhat week uh i didn't expect that to happen I'll tap silence uh, on the shoulder you did good no uh, we failed uh you haven't arrived at the farm yet uh, i don't know if there's anything going on at the farm but we should check um, do i recognize the guy Yeah, like we should search look. him and possibly bury him. That's what I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, we don't want to leave him just on the side of the road. Um, so, yes, I will, uh, I mean, I'll see if I can find any identification papers. I'll take a look at his face, see if I saw him around town. Uh, or if he's carrying anything that could identify who, who, who he was with, yeah. who hired him. 
gold crossbow bolts, take his crossbow, maybe. <laughs> I mean, he won't be anything. Uh, he does have a, a, uh, a light crossbow. There's a, a small bundle of bolts, uh, nine of them at this point. Um, has very uh, simple clothing, uh, but the clothing is all sewn and tied in such a way to be very close to the body probably so that he can move with uh, through the woods without snagging on anything and being very careful. Um, uh, very simple clothing, nothing particularly fancy. has a small pouch, um, which contains two, two copper. Who's made, who's actually doing this? Uh, I will. Case? Okay, make I, an investigation I would be check. helping because I also have intentions to bury the body. So. Okay. So make it with advantage as the two of you are looking over the body. 23. Natural 20. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Well, uh, there is the small uh, pouch with only a couple of copper. It was kind of an obvious pouch. And as you go searching a little bit deeper, uh, you find underneath his shirt is a thin leather pouch, uh, which actually has uh, 10 silver and four copper. Not a huge fortune, but what he had. Um, as you kind of remove that, you also note a small uh, tattoo uh, on uh, his chest over his heart. And the tattoo is in the shape of a, a diamond. Uh, the inside of the tattoo looks very complex. In other words, it looks like a simple tattoo from a distance. Uh, but as you take a little closer look at it, you can kind of note that there are specific uh, designs on the inside. It would be very difficult hmm. to replicate that simply. Um I'm going to take a little while, and I pull out a uh, uh, a book, and I start uh, copying the uh, design of the diamond uh, onto a page. Okay. Sounds like you guys are going to take a little while. Yeah. You want to take a short rest? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yes, we burn the body so he can live on in the Everlight, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah. That is what, uh, yeah. what Ignis would ask for. Uh -huh. I'm not he was an enemy, but he was also like just the crony doing his jobs. So, yeah. uh, I would like to. Um, is there a way I could help Silas um, recreate that with my uh, proficiency in for, uh, forgery kit? You could pull out the forgery kit. Yeah, that would help definitely with some angles. I'm assuming the forgery kit is not just made up of inks, but actually includes a lot of measuring tools to make sure that the forgery has the same proportions and shape yeah. and all those sorts of cool. things. Uh, definitely. So that would give an advantage on a, I guess a performance role to really recreate it properly. Or if Annie wanted to take the lead, it'd be the opposite. Uh, uh, she would actually roll with proficiency um, and probably perception, I think. So whichever way you want to take that role. Uh as you both so I wouldn't just use a proficiency in forgery kit. It would be the proficiency in forgery kit, and I'm saying it would be perception as the as the uh, stat uh, associated with it. it, unless it has a stat already associated with it. I don't know if it does. Um, I it doesn't explicitly state any. Yeah, it doesn't specifically state any. So usually it's um, charisma or um, dexterity because it's like detail work. In this case, it's perception because Perception's he's trying to perceive that the... Oh, sorry, you're right. <laughs> That's just me being dumb. Uh, that would make it intelligence then. Uh, yeah. So the other way would be performance, which I think is probably charisma. Uh, yeah, enough. I've got a decent performance. Uh, so I forgot to set it with advantage. <laughs> So which one of you is making the role? Does that sound like Annie's making the I role? I guess then? she is. Okay. So 22. 22? Yeah, you figure you've got a pretty good version of it. You, you've you probably blown it up a little bit so you can actually get yeah. at the details. Like you, you've drawn it bigger than it is, but noted how wide and how what size it was yeah. and where it was in the body. Um, the body is already cooling uh, as you kind of take your, your measurement kit out and measure along the different edges. It looks as though, as you study it closer, um, the outside is very crisp and clear of a very simple diamond. But inside, there are notches and there are uh, uh, notches and spikes that come in. 
they do form some sort of pattern. Um, it would take some studying to figure out what the pattern was and probably need to either have a another example to compare it to or perhaps uh, if you if there if there was a key but you get the sense that it's not just a simple uh, copyable tattoo as such um, it was more or less individual to this person that's what you kind of understand as you go through it each of you can take a short rest and roll some hit dice yep, if you find appropriate I, was I think uh, Medrick definitely wants to do um, are you doing anything about the tree which is across the road uh... Yeah, after I rest, I'll try to move it. Also, uh, do you guys... I'll ask uh, Annie and Silas. Do you guys use crossbows? I, I'm wearing one. <laughs> okay. Guess we can uh, probably like split the bolts three-way. I mean, I don't have one, so... Okay. Well, y'all can... You can have them if you want. I don't use mine all that much. All right. So, um, um, bolts to my inventory. Yeah. If... Oh, he, he did carry a dagger as well. Just a yeah, plain, simple dagger. Fine. Um, May I have the dagger? Sure. I don't mind. Um, are we going to bury him or are we going to burn him? I don't mind either way, but if we're going to burn him, that, that uh, may take a while. We'll have to stay here until the fire is out to make sure it doesn't uh, catch in the woods. Uh, for... It would be easier in the woods. Uh, no, I don't have a shovel on me. Uh... You do know that there are plenty of wild animals in the woods, too, that if it was unburied, the body would be gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that how they tend to handle uh, funerals around here? Burning? No. <laughs> well, well, burning they might. Uh, uh, well, burning actually is really woods, common. Yeah, um, to rot, probably not. If It, it kind of comes down to whom, whomever they believe the body would be closer to. For the Igneans, uh, they would go and they would be burned at the temple. For anyone who follows Marina, it's actually a, death, a burial at sea, where they would take you out in a boat and throw you overboard. Uh, in a shroud, so it's with respect. This um, diamond the, they like? the Tendu would tend to build this a, diamond religion. Sorry. What do they like? I'm asking to like my companions, basically. I don't think it's a religion. I think they're bandits or something. Uh, dang it. Okay, no, can't do that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can make an illusion of him being buried <laughs> but uh, I'm not really I don't really have the stuff on me oh uh, we could bury I'm him probably just taking a walk then I, I forgot that I have a horse but uh, I, 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 I left that back at town let's say um, it's not, it's not shallow really that far away the and you're the only one with a horse I'm mean, just saying, you know, it's not that far away, and if you're the only one with a horse, that's kind of obnoxious. Mm. Um, you do know that the the Tendu people, the people who follow Tendu, tend to just bury in stone uh, as the the the, the last resort. Um, if the person has any significance, they'll actually build a cairn yeah. or something. Yeah, I mean, that and that's something that. that we can do as an option. Actually, yeah, it's just uh, pile up rocks around them. That's the other thing that gets you done for burials, so. Or we can dig a shallow hole, like, say, two feet deep, put the body in it, and then burn it so the fire doesn't escape and catch the forest on fire, and we can just walk away. No, we'd, we'd have to stay to make sure nothing jumped out. Uh, jumped but, out. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he'll start picking up whatever rocks he can. He's not terribly strong, but. Uh, yeah, I'll help out with that. Take it like maybe oh, thirty feet okay. to the woods, and then build a a uh, a pile of rocks over them. Okay. Um, both you and Medrick are involved. Both you make investigation rolls. Oh, that's intelligence! God damn. I get a six. <laughs> Uh, 
I got a 13 with my minus one. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, Silas, you're kind of uh, just wandering out to find a few rocks. There's some, some mossy stones and different piles here and there. Looks like there might have been some stones that were pulled out of the road maybe before. Some of them a little heavier to find. Uh, Medrick, as you're looking around, you kind of, it takes you a moment. It's like, that, that does not look like a road or a rock. It doesn't look like a tree. And you realize it's the remains of a wagon wheel that's been broken up and, and, uh, and put there. And as you dig a little bit further, you find the remains of uh, a wagon. You find uh, a skull and some other bones of people who've been killed and placed there. And after kind of surveying the scene for a moment, you realize this was not a unique ambush. They had used this probably numerous times over the years and just carried all the evidence off into the side of the woods. Silas, come here. Oh, hey. Look, we're more dead people. Uh, okay, yeah. And kind of looking and judging at it, you, you can tell that there was some effort made to kind of bury the bodies, but they've been pulled out probably by wild animals. Do we know like what races they are? Like, are they, if there's like tiny skulls, I'm assuming halflings or? It's, there's a, a one halfling or possibly a young human. Uh, the other two there, as you kind of pull out, you realize there's three skulls in total. The other two are roughly human size, but they could be elven. It's hard to tell at the particular <laughs> state like, of bones. Do they probably look pretty? Okay. Uh, if they're pretty, they're elves. They look, they, they look pretty dead. Um, uh, beyond that, it's hard to tell. If you wanted to if you make a medicine check, you can probably do a little bit better if you're trained in medicine to understand. No. Uh, uh, medicine check. On the first skull I find, or the one that looks the most complete. Whoa, whoa, not minus two. I actually have medicine trained. Woo! 23. Right, I forgot you're not checking your old 20. I, I'm, I'm not able to, I, I really don't want to change any windows or touch anything at this point. Uh, the, uh, uh, it does appear to be two elves okay. and a halfling. The, the skulls are pretty old. Probably were there maybe in the fall. Um, there's signs of, uh, of uh, grinding on them as if the, the flesh was kind of ripped off, the bones are in disarray. You do find that on one of the elves, the one of the forearms is broken, probably yeah. when they were attacked. Um, the other elf has a pair of broken ribs, probably from a, uh, a crossbow. If this bolt. is two and a half elves, I want to check for Charlie Sheen. <laughs> he's, wondering about tiger blood. He's, he's drinking, ti he's drinking <laughs> tiger blood, yes. Um, well, you find a tiger skeleton with... No when way. we get back to town, we'll have to uh, let the let Sir McManus uh, know that there are some people out here that need a proper burial. Uh, uh, you, you've been here for a while in this town. Uh, do you know here. there's records of missing people? Um, I mean, it's a small town. There's woods. Some people do go missing on occasion. And, I mean, as you can see, there's bandits here. Uh, I don't know who these people might have been, but... And there's a wagon, too, or what's left of it. Yeah. Um... Yeah. I mean... Do you guys think we should just head to the farm and check it out first or uh oh yeah. annie we found a uh, wagon uh, an old wagon and some dead bodies here from probably previous banditry um i would like to take an did we grab the notice for the job probably oh, yeah um yeah i mean if uh, we're the ones heading out then I would like to actually take a look at the notice. Does it seem legit? Okay. Compared to what? I don't know. I I just want to see like how new it is because we just messed with these people recently. Um, 
Um, sure. And like, just does it seem? I, I want to take a like closer look to see if it's like meant as a trap. Okay. Um, let's call this a insight check. Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, looking at it, it's a fairly cheap paper. Looks like the handwriting is kind of primitive. Some someone who doesn't really write a lot. Um, it, there's nothing really indicating that it would be uh, anything other than it is. Um, it was recently made. The ink is not uh, wet, but you can see kind of it hasn't seeped in too hard into the uh, parchment. Um, the parchment itself is a cheap sort of extra piece of paper, um, such as you would have for scrap pieces of paper. So it doesn't look like it's been faked in any okay. way. But then again, if someone did it really well, it would look exactly like As it does. someone so. who's proficient in forgery kit. Exactly. Um. exactly. The only real way to know is probably to talk to the farmer and see if they yep. actually put this notice up. If we're up. close to the farm, we might as well keep going. We'll yep. try moving the tree out of the way. You I will assist with my nine. <laughs> okay, you've got a very tiny end of the top the tree. of the tree. <laughs> All right. This will be a, 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 a strength-based uh, 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 need... Uh, Three right. successes, essentially. A crit would count for two successes, so it's going to take Pick a little while. Pick up the tree and heave. So, I'm helping with twelve strength, so actually a bonus. I'm giving advantage to Medric. So the first one is a seventeen. Okay. Do I roll with advantage? Yes. The second yes. one is a five, so I'll take that seventeen. Seven. <laughs> okay, that's a success. How did? Amy oh, I, I was helping him with an with actual like. Actually, being able to help, not just like lift the arm. Well, that. Well, that that gives you a chance to roll. It is three successes needed. So, if, if you're helping someone, you're not necessarily going to get more successes. Yeah. It's kind of an all hands on deck. I, I'm just gonna roll athletics because I don't have a bonus and can't figure out how to roll just a straight strength. This would be athletics. So, if you have an athletics cool. bonus, that would count. Uh, okay, that would be like 22 then instead of 17. <laughs> yeah. And you 13. got a what, uh, Annie? I'm used to 13. 13. Yeah, it's hard to kind of it's hard to kind of uh, uh, find a good place to grip and you kind of grip into it and you find yourself holding a branch which is not really holding any weight. Well, and meanwhile, Silas at the other end is kind of dragging the, the tip of the tree and Medric is doing the lion's share of the work. How about another roll? We'll see if you can get those other two successes. You athletics need. again. Oops. Yep. So 14 plus athletics is 19. Remember, you've got advantage. Yeah, no problem. All right. Still 19. <laughs> oh, and he kills it. 20. Yeah, what did 20. he get? Not, not a natural oh, 20. There you go. Oh, it's not, okay. not a natural That's okay. not but after after a couple more seconds, uh, Annie realizes where she's going wrong and kind of leans in a little bit uh, towards the center of the tree, amazingly able to move close to the tree without getting hung up in all the branches, uh, kind of carefully moving yourself in and maneuvering and gives it just that extra little push. And between you and Medrick, you, you shove the tree off the side of the road. It's a good looking tree. It was in uh, it was fairly uh, uh, good shape. It wasn't uh, being attacked by bugs or anything. So. Somebody could probably make some good wood out of that, but it serves a lot better being on the side of the There right was now. a logging notice on the board. Maybe for later. <laughs> no. This is where if you did have the, the horse... This out of character, this is why Amarin had a wagon with four horses, shovels, pickaxes, and axes. Yeah, but what fun is that? You're being prepared all the time. Yes, I, <laughs> one time I heard somebody tell me about this magic... <laughs> plate that hovers off the ground and you can put things on it and it follows you around so if you want to carry something you don't have to carry it it just follows you, can you do neat. no no oh. <laughs> it's an illusion no then i probably can't do it 
At this point, it is early afternoon, and I'm assuming you're heading yeah. back down the road. Yep, to the farm, I guess. Yep. The gray skies have solidified into a uh, solid mass now, with little uh, wisps of, of silver and white running through them. A light rain tumbles down, cooling things off even more. It's been a reasonably good spring so far, but this is one of those those cold days. On the good side of things, a rain like this will probably provoke a lot of beautiful flowers but on the bad side of this you're probably going to be soaked within the next half hour unless you have some way of sheltering yourselves how close are we to the farm you said it was about an hour's walk i'm assuming we've been walking for about well before we... not very far another another 15 okay. 20 minutes probably so we can probably get to the if farm we, before it we... rains oh uh, well main... it is raining <laughs> pretty much as you start uh, it's a light drizzle, but it's it's one of those those light drizzles that's kind of like a fog that just sort of we sound around to, you. Uh, we we listen to the sound of the rainfall hitting Medrick's armor like a tin roof. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> On the good side of things, uh, it is cleaning out your armor, so some of the the blood that you had before uh, is getting a little washed out, and uh, some of the fresh scarring from Ignis's blessings uh, is getting nicely cooled off from this cool. rain. A uh, little rumble of thunder uh, happens off in the distance, however. It looks like we're going to get a bigger storm. But as you kind of walk up the road, um, you see uh, a farm off to the left. Uh, it's got its own little extra um, driveway, essentially, off to the main house. You can see lights on in the main house, a warming fire probably burning, as you can see the wisp of smoke overhead. Uh, nobody's outside at the moment, but you can see pastures on beyond, a couple of big uh, barns, um, the uh, distant sound of uh, mooing as some of the cows are getting a little agitated from the run the increasing rumbling of the skies. Conveniently, the children downstairs um, have started running, so I'm feeling the rumbling. <laughs> <laughs> In a more immersive role-playing experience. There we go. We're, we, it's, it's immersive. That's what we're doing. It's just immersive. And so. Turn down the road. You... <laughs> There's a, a little sign uh, that kind of hangs over the uh, on an arch over top of the road. Um, this road actually looks a lot more better kept. It's like they've taken time to actually take some pride in their space. Um, and the arch overhead does read uh, Wintrop Farm. Um, is anybody trained in religion? Yep. I think Medrick might be. Yeah. Um, kind of. Glancing up at it, the, the, the arch does have the sort of uh, look of a tendu arch, but it's made of wood. It could just be an arch, but it's not uncommon for this kind of style. As you proceed up the, the, the driveway, pools are starting to form, puddles are starting to form on the, on the road, and a few ruts that are there. The road's getting a little bit slick and, uh, and rough. The rain looks like it's going to be piling on pretty heavily. And sure enough, there's a, a, a louder rumble, and suddenly it just starts sheeting down as you give it a halfway to the house. Damn it. Chill that. Are you going to move quickly? or um, A little quicker. This is why I'm wearing a nice thick jacket and a big hat. You can kind of tell the one who is made from a fisherman's village uh, by the one who's got essentially a slicker on. Uh, as you make your way to the to the house... You can see that there's uh, someone sitting on the porch. Uh, looks to be an uh, an older, somewhat portly man, uh, human, uh, largest beard. You can see a wisp of smoke rolling up from a, uh, a a long pipe that he seems to be smoking. Just sort of sitting there, rocking back and forth, calmly watching you as you come in. I'll walk up to him. I'll wave. I'll walk up. Nice big farmhouse, wide... Uh, a uh, wide porch, open, no no, uh, no sides on it. Uh, a couple of chairs that are Hello, there. Hello, Mr. Wintrop. Ah. Hello, I don't know if I know you at all, but uh, welcome nonetheless. Come in, come in out of the oh, rain. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's, yeah. I was looking for my name. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Silas, Silas Marsh. Uh, this is my, uh, 
my friend Annie and uh, my other friend Medrick. No, I didn't. You know, flashbacks to the Bob oh. Newhart show. <laughs> this is my friend Annie, my other friend Annie. Um, nicely met. Nicely met. Nicely met. Well, you seem to know my name, but you can call me Winthrop, as most of the most of the folks from town do. Or if and you're going to be polite, I suppose you can call me Rex. Well, uh, Rex, it is. Um, we heard that you were having some problems out here. It's missing cattle. There was an ad on the job board. It takes a takes a, a deep pull from the the uh, the uh, pipe and kind of nods. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what you hear about then. Yeah. All right. Hey, Alma yells into the house. Put up some more tea. We got some people here to help us with the problem. You hear from inside the house. Oh yeah, how many? Looks to be three. Uh, I take my hat off and looking around for a place to hang and I'll say, uh, uh, may I? May you what, sir? Uh, I put my, I have my hat up as though I could like put it down on something. <coughs> uh, you have a place I may uh, set oh, this yes. so it can drip dry. Oh, there's some nails by the door there. Hang pretty Thank well you. Right there. Come in, come in by the fire and dry yourselves off. Uh, Jeez, it's a terrible day to be walking. He'll find one of the sturdier nails and uh, take off his long coat. Put that on that. He'll, he'll have to wait. When you look at them, they're actually, sure. wooden, they're actually wooden okay. pegs that have been nailed into or, or hammered into spaces between the wood on this uh, this cabin wall, essentially. Well, farmhouse yeah. wall, I should say. And they look to be okay. fairly sturdy. Um, you kind of get this impression too. This farmhouse is old. Uh, it's 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 weathered. Uh, it's but it looks sturdy. Uh, every once in a while, you note a, a new board that's been laid down on the on the porch, or um, you know, new glass that's been added to a window that probably didn't have any glass before. Wooden yeah. shutters over them. Go inside. Go inside. This looks like it's going to be bad. And he walks over to one of the shutters and starts to close. Yeah, it's a fair nor'easter. <laughs> My accent is not that bad. Uh, I was working. It's a wicked piss. Yeah, well, like yeah, not in Maine. They don't. Uh, that's Chicago. It's not not Maine, man. Yeah, it's Eskers. <laughs> they can do anything they want there. Um, <laughs> and you'll also she'll actually take off her uh, cloak, and this is the first time you've seen her without her hood up. Uh, and her holding his cloak on a peg as well. So like. All right. As soon as you step inside, the the heat is tremendous. Um, you can see you can see on the other side of the room there's a large uh, hearth that's that's been uh, that's been built up. Uh, there's a couple of big cooking pots uh, on the hearth as well, and there's a, another uh, human uh, a woman, an older woman uh, with uh, delightful gray hair that's bound up a couple of times across her across her back. And she smiles as you enter. Oh, no. Are you in for some tea after that terrible walk? Uh, if you would, ma'am. Um, thank you very much. If it's available, I'll help myself. Thanks. She pulls one of the smaller pots off of the uh, the, the hearth and uh, pours a, a lot of a bunch of the water into a ceramic uh, teapot and throws a couple of uh, well, actually crumb goes to a, a, a clay pot pulls out some leaves, crumbles them up, and throws them inside the pot. Now they'll just take a minute or two to steep up. Rex, where the hell are you? <laughs> I'm coming, woman, I'm coming. I'm outside. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Have you been walking about an hour? We came from a uh, Silver Room Bay. Yeah, I ran into, uh, actually, I think we came from Elfwater. Isn't that the town's name? Yeah, Okay. Yeah, Silver Moon Bay is the okay. whole general area. It still would be technically Silver Moon Bay, even though you're fairly inland. I said Silver Moon Bay because I didn't remember. I didn't remember the name of the town. <laughs> yeah, I just I happened to write yeah, it down. No I think I have it right. Um, uh, yeah, we've just uh, we come from the town, uh, looking to see if we could help with your uh, your problems here, and ran across some bandits out on the road. 
Oh, no, you don't no, say that. Uh, all right, it though. did not fare well for them. Uh, there was a fallen tree, too. We moved it. A fallen there tree. Was what? Oh, well, that's awful neighborly of you. Um, you didn't want anyone else to get hung up on it. That sounds pretty fair. We found bodies, too, like, aside from the one that just showed up there. I guess another wagon got attacked last oh, fall no. at the same spot. Two well, last fall. Looks like, like they said. may have been using that spot before for their traps. Who'd you say it was? We don't know the people. They said they uh, they seemed to work for a, a diamond or Mr. Diamond or something like that. Maybe it's the Diamond Gang. They were not quite for, that forthcoming. These are the bodies. No, found. no, the Bandit. those are the bandits we fought. Uh, bodies. Oh, there was. Uh, I, I actually uh, Silas would look over at Medrick and he said, "You were uh, studying them. What? Uh, there's a small one and two larger ones. Two elves and one halfling and a broken wagon. They probably got dumped there last fall." And you see her face kind of uh, fall with sadness. Oh, Did you know no. them? Oh, yeah, yeah. We get folks to come out here from time to time. We can do some of the slaughtering of the meat here, and some of them like to take it into town for extra work on it, that sort of thing. And we were expecting a, a, a group to come in. Uh, it's a small caravan that they... They they bring their stuff all the way well, to the bigger cities and stuff. I guess our meat's really popular out that way. I don't know. I don't get out that way myself. But they didn't show up last year, and, well, I figured they must have just found a different route. Terrible shame. And they were, oh, no. And she looks really sad. She kind of has to sit down. That's terrible news. You know, it used to be such a nice place around here. But it feels like... Ah, something's changed. Something's changed, and I just don't know what it What's is. That? What's that, dear? What's changed? You changed the stew? But no, dear. And she... I'm going to have to get some names for these guys, but... She, uh... uh hey, Eldred. Says... <laughs> Do you remember the Canavars? Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen them for a while. Well, we won't be seeing them. They found them. Oh, you found the canavars then? Well, they explain why they haven't come for a while then? Yeah. I'm afraid they... Uh, Sorry about that. They were victims of bandits. Well, damn it all, why would that happen? He slams his fist down on the table. Oh, it's terrible. You know, there was a day when you could just, you could walk forever and not have a fear of maybe a bear or something like that. But you knew better to stay away from a bear's den or a wolf's hole. But uh, where were they? They said they were along the road. Yes, Is that right? shortly off into the woods. Not yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll describe the spot on the road and... Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Well, I wonder if they're the ones responsible for us losing our cows. I'm sorry, Annie. Uh, we, we would have buried them, but we didn't have a shovel. Oh, well, I, if, if, if you're going to be going that way, I can I can give you a shovel to do the deed upright. Maybe I could help they're you, too. They're not too far. He kind, of, he kind of straightens up his back, and he kind of gives that... Uh, <laughs> he's probably getting up there a little older than he really should be for farm well, if you work. They were, what, 10, 15 minutes away? Mm-hmm. Probably about, yeah, 20, 25 minutes, probably. If you've got a, a, a couple of shovels, I'm sure that uh, uh, my friends uh, and I can uh, can do the job and make sure it's done up. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, it's terrible news. I, here now, if I give you a note, could you make sure that it gets sent on? I think I remember their contact in Pitajun. would probably want to know they're not, not around anymore. Certainly. 
Well, if you, if you also, have uh, the contact for their family, maybe we we can get the remains. Well, I, I don't know their family all that much. They were a sort of strange family out of um, themselves. Uh, but uh, but uh, it'd be good to get in touch with their contact. Probably also, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but uh, I have to make a living. And, well, uh, you know, not sending cattle and sheep out that way does cost a bit. So maybe they'd send another caravan to come, you know, take the route up again. If it were safe enough for it, I mean. Of course. Yeah. Uh, these bandits. I wonder if they're the ones then that have been taking my own cattle. A couple of sheep last week. When too. has it started? Your cattle going missing. Uh, I told them. I mean, you lose one or two from time to time anyway. You know, uh, a hungry wolf decides to make off with a, a cow who's wandered too far from the herd. Or, or a few other things, you know, we'll hunt them occasionally. But you try to keep them safe as much as you can. But uh, last week... Well, run up ten different cows just gone missing. There weren't no sign of a fight, weren't no sign of blood, nothing. Ten of them, ten of them in a week? I figure something. Yeah, yeah about, about a, ten of them a week. Well, I think it was two at first that we noticed, but there might have been five at that point. It's hard to keep track of them sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, in total, when we counted them up and got them back to the barns, there was ten missing. <laughs> Well, I need to graze them out there. I, I, I can't keep them in the barns. The damn near out of out of the winter hay and the fresh, fresh green grass is what makes them taste yeah. very good. Um, Have you found any clues or tracks that are not the tracks of cows? Well, you know, if, an, if, a, if a wolf or a bear had made off with a cow, there's usually some sign of blood, and, you know, you'll hear the high hell from the cows themselves, but... <laughs> We didn't hear any warning like that, and I didn't see any sign of blood. So I figure maybe they wandered off on their own, but I can't go chasing them over the hills if they've gone. Mm. Tell them about the shadow, Derry. Oh, no. Alma, don't shadow about the shadow. What? That's nothing. It's not nothing. I saw it with my own eyes. What did you see? Well, and uh, Rex kind of walks over to the fire, puts his hands in the fire. Kind of, you get the impression he's heard this story too many times and doesn't want to say anything. But at the same time, he's not going to contradict her, at least not at this point. Um, she pours out tea for all of you. It's got a nice, rich uh, smell to it. Uh, very, very uh, 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 acrid. It's got a very almost um, licorice mm -hmm. edge to it. Yeah. Uh, I hate licorice. <laughs> um. Well, it was just the other night. And Rex was out getting the, getting the cows their evenings. I'm hearing more voices. This is not me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, talking on the phone. Well, okay. Okay, good. Uh, I, 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 yeah, never mind. Uh I was out. Uh, I, I was out to, 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 to gather some eggs for the for the mornings uh, mornings uh, next meals. We don't have anybody at the farm right now. It's just the two of us. We're we're getting some workers in soon. You know, it's it's we do what we can during the winter time. It's not so tough, but now we're starting to get them out in the fields, and it's starting to get a bit harder. And well, Rex isn't as young as he as he as he once was. And here over from the fire, I never was. Woman, just get to your point. <laughs> Well, I was out to the barn, and I thought I heard something. Some of the chickens started making a noise. So I crept around the corner, all, scare, all careful and scarce-like, and I looked around. And didn't I see something just hovering over one of the cows for a moment? It looked like a shadow. It looked like a cloud. It had fallen over the, cl the, the cow. It didn't seem to bother the cow none. I must have made a noise, and it just vanished all of a sudden. I told Rex over there, but he says I just seen shadows in the night. Uh, a cloud passing in front of one of the moons or something. But I'm not so sure it was. Hmm. And to tell you the truth, I haven't slept well ever since I've seen that. Is that the only time you've seen it? 
It's the only time that I have. But I got to admit, I don't quite look out to the shadows at night as much as I used to. Make sure, Make sure I'm carrying a large lantern with me at all times. And, well, I don't, I don't tend to go too far from the house. And now, the reason, tell them, the reason you're not sleeping all that well is because you keep blaming me for snoring. Well, that doesn't help. But it's been the dreams that have been bothering What kind of dreams? And when you saw the shadow of, when you say it disappeared, did it notice you watching it? Well, it didn't make out a head as such, or, a, or an eye, or a face, or anything like that. I, it seemed to react when I accidentally kicked the door, so I guess it must have heard me. Now, don't get all worked up about that. I told you it's nothing more than a cloud. Happens all the time. There's no need in getting more scared about it and telling them some tales to make them even scared. It's more like a clue. Uh, what about the dreams? Now, don't go on too much about the dream. Just a brief description. It's not... I can't really describe it. You know how it is when you wake up in the morning and you... You know you've dreamt something, but you just can't hold on to mm -hmm. it. I'm usually in but fire. I wake up feeling... There's no fire, but it just feels afraid. When I was a girl, I... I well, I, I fell down a hill. I was out wandering as you do, you know, collecting little, uh, little things I could find, shiny rocks on the hills and little flowers and such. And I had a terrible fall. And I get the impression I'm feeling that again. It's like I've just fallen, but I, I don't remember that too much. Hmm. She just got herself spooked, and that's all it is. Now, as for the cows, if you can help me, I'll definitely pay for it. If you can find the cows, if they've just been wandering, then that's even better. But if they've been taken by an animal, well, maybe best to see if they can, animals can be convinced to be a little farther away. Some of them can't be convinced with the subtle uh, warnings, but I'm not up to fighting any wolves anytime soon. If it were those bandits, though, well, that might be something best left to others. Well, is there any particular area the cows were disappearing? Well, I mean, the cows spread out all over the lands. I could show you the, the lands tomorrow when it's uh, sunny, I suppose, <laughs> if it's sunny. And at that point, there's a, a rumble of thunder and a, a bit of a flash from outside as, as lightning crashes across the sky. Looks to be a pretty mighty bad storm. You'll be staying the night, then. We get extra space. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of hands in for the summer, so there's no trouble. No. Sure. As long as it's no trouble to you. No, no. Alma likes to cook for a crowd, don't you? Well, it's true. I might just have a pie or two I could whip up to if pie. you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Made from preserves. There's no fresh berries this time of year, but I've got some left over from last year. It'll taste just as good when it's all baked delicious. up. delicious. Well then. And she kind of steps up and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start with that. And um, each of you can make an insight check. Can we? You can try. <laughs> you can hey, certainly try. My sheet. Oh, here it is. It's right in front of me. A good eight. Mm. I got a... Find it. Thirteen. That's mediocre. Better than the eights. <laughs> How did Andy do? Annie's on mute. Nope. I got an eight. Got an eight. All right. Well, well uh, yeah. I guess it was Medrick who noticed the most. Just that when uh, Alma stood up and kind of... Uh, 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 almost kind of brushed her hands, uh, kind of, you know, kind of brush yourself off. You're getting ready for something else. Um, you notice that her hands were shaking a little bit, and she kind of grips her hands together to steady them. 
uh, before going into the other half. Now, this is uh, built kind of lodge style. This main section is just basically one large area. The kitchen is kind of at one side of this. The the dining room table is right in the middle. There's no separate rooms. The far end, you can see there are rooms uh, or hallways that lead off to other rooms, probably the bunk houses she was talking about in their own bedrooms. But she starts to busy herself and goes to the to the root cellar to grab a What bottle. was her name again? Alma. A-L-M-A. Alma. A-L-M-A. Alma yeah. Wintrop. I won't say anything right away because I don't want to make things awkward because her husband's right there. And I realize my character is probably also like kind of slightly terrifying to her, so I'll just wait until she like knows us better. <laughs> Okay. Um, is there any chance um, we might have a look at the barn if that's nearby and we can get started looking for clues? I'll take, I'll take you over to the barn. You have you got good slickers it's like uh, this tall one here? Or sorry, the small one. How tall is this? Yeah, I'm 5'9". Yeah. I'm 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> No, what you came in was already drenched, so come come with me. He leads you towards the back of the, the space and hands you, uh, pulls out uh, these heavy uh, leather oiled cloaks, or coats, really. Uh, he seems to have a lot of them, probably because he also gives them to the farm hands when they need to do stuff out there, too. Do any of them fit me? <laughs> uh, it's a little short. <laughs> it won't I'll just kind of, like, put it, hold it over my head, kind of. Okay. At least so I don't sound like a tin roof. <laughs> Sounds fair. Uh, and he uh, grabs a, a large bullseye lantern, gets it lit up. If you'll all follow me. Looks like a wicked, terrible mm -hmm. night out there. And he leads you off towards the barns. Um, the ground is already... Uh, already grown pretty thick with water and it's a bit sloppy and slushy as you step over uh, it's a little chilly for the evening as well the constant cracking of thunder the occasional crash of lightning overhead um, kind of illuminating a landscape that is uh, kind of just starting to come back alive uh, from the the winter you can see little little spurts of of uh, grass growing up and behind in between rocks yeah. and stone you can see uh, far off, there is a, a stone uh, wall as well, just on the edge. Um, and uh, uh, we're going to wrap up it pretty soon as we get to, the I think, this next spot. Um, as uh, he leads you over towards a large barn, the walls have been made out of stone. It's actually in the ground, and it doesn't look very high. But then he kind of leads you around the back, and you can see mounds have been uh, built up along the, the other three sides. Uh, and it's actually almost half underground and uh, leads you in and you can hear uh, the uh, mild lowing of cows and the subtle bleating of, of sheep uh, and uh, occasional clucking of chicken. Every time there's a, a, a rumble of thunder in particular, the chickens seem to go a little crazy uh, for a moment or two. Probably was something like this. The missus was probably just spooked by a cloud or a lightning or something like that. Still, I can't hurt to take a look, I suppose. Here's where we keep most of the cows all the winter, and here's where we've been keeping them mostly since they've been going missing. We all walk in. Are we all walking in together? Or? Okay. He's leading you in. He's opened up the very wide doors. I'll follow him in. Um, okay. Down at the far end, that's where I have... Uh, a, a, a door to another building. It's where I do the slaughtering as necessary. I don't do as much myself as I said. Sometimes they just come and they'll do it, or bring in the, their own uh, their own person to do it, or or they'll even take sometimes a live herds back. But that's where I do those that. I keep it locked off though, because it gets a little stinky in there, a little open to the weather as well. So, but as you can see, any kind of points and you can see that the the barn actually goes under the ground quite a bit um and uh looks like it's a very strong built large stone pillars to hold up the the roof uh there's about uh about a herd of about 30 cows roughly speaking uh looks like about 15 sheep on the other side uh chickens on the in the in the sort of the back 
Uh, each of you make a perception check. As he kind of flashes over with the the uh, the uh, lantern, and there's a bit of a crash Six. of lightning. Seven. Six. Seven. Eight. Thirteen. <laughs> At least one of us can see shit stuff. <laughs> Uh, Annie, the, the the sort of the smell of the place overwhelms you a little bit. Uh, it for anybody who's been on a farm, this is not an abnormal smell. The smell of manure and is pretty natural. It builds up a little bit if you're inside. There's some air flow in here anyway, but it's not something you're exactly used to, and it's a little bit overwhelming and kind of throws you off a little bit. Uh, Silas, for you, the smell of the sea is far more familiar. Uh, and while you've been around some uh, farm animals, uh, it also is a little bit, uh, a little bit unnerving. And in fact, the more unnerving part is a little squirm by your shoulder, as uh, Gideon kind of pokes out a nose to look what's going on, and then immediately darts back in uh, as a crash of thunder goes off. Uh, Medric, um, you're looking around, and one of the cows is looking straight at you. Like, the rest of them are kind of milling about and chewing uh, their cud and maybe occasionally re-eating, re-eating grass and just sort of being cows. But one of them is staring straight at you. Is there anything else different about that cow compared to all the other ones? I mean, you can take a closer look. And are you I trying to major? don't think so. Oh, no, I got, a, I got all of minus one major. You know, it's a cow. It, okay. it tastes good. I, I know that much. <laughs> I mean, for whatever reason, the cow is staring at you. You don't know if this is typical cow behavior, but the flash of lightning uh, kind of illuminates the space once more. And then after the, the lightning is gone and uh, uh, Rex kind of turns his, his bullseye lantern, just sort of showing different features of the place, you look back and the cow's not looking at you. It seems to be chewing just as it normally would. I'll look at the cow some more. And I'll try to see if any of the other cows are looking at me. Or, or anything. Okay. Because that was sketch. So Medrick walks over to the edge of the cow pen. He starts to stare at one of the cows. Is there a problem? I'm like hand over my face. Like... Cow was looking right at me. Uh, Rex, is it normal that cows just stare at you and try to stare into your soul or something? I never known a cow that's that um well interested, I guess. I don't know what a cow staring into your soul means. No, it's just me being dramatic and exaggerating, but it was staring at me and it was making me uncomfortable. There's a loud large uh, sorry, loud moo from the other end and he kind of turns his bullseye lantern in that direction. And one of the cows just is standing there stock still and then falls over. What in the, what in the blazes is Thank that? You. And he runs over. The bullseye lantern is bouncing madly, sending light in all directions. There's a couple of, there's a crash from overhead as lightning kind of strikes, probably pretty close to a tree nearby. Uh, and you can kind of feel that little bit of electricity in the air. And the, uh, he kind of, leaps over the fence agile for an old man and kind of goes in and sets the lantern down by the side of this cow who's I'll follow him falling over yeah i have no idea what cow health is like uh but uh, i will actually i'll i'll look around see if anything else is happening okay oh, sorry. make a perception check <clears throat> i'll pick out my hooded lantern Eleven. No, I'll take it. My Warhammer. <laughs> okay. Um, Rex goes up to the cow and kind of puts his hand on the cow. I don't understand. It's what? it's dead. And as you look around, Silas, from the corner of your eye, it's there and not there at the same time. This little edge of darkness seems to move around the edge of the ceiling. And one of the sheep lets out a loud bleat. And that's where we're going to end it for this week. On dying livestock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy there were no more technical problems after the initial... Third time's the charm, man. 
Third time's a charm. Oh, yeah. Well, so we're going to end it there. Uh, I got a few more things to prepare. I wasn't sure which question. Uh, quick question to the DM. Do, do cows get death saves? Yes. <laughs> do cows get death saves? Uh, dramatically, what? no. <laughs> For oh, dramatic man. reasons, no. As in, like, if I cast Healing Word on a cow, would it come back to life? <laughs> I mean, you can always try. It may also turn it into roast beef. Uh, based on your particular powers, but <laughs> well, Clever. thanks guys for putting up with the technical issues and getting into this this weird new campaign. I kind of warned you it was going to be different. Uh, you now have some idea of some of the opposition that's out there and that there are yeah. weird things afoot. So <laughs> we will attempt to meet again next week with no technical issues. Uh, he said. And we'll find out the, the the case of the missing livestock next week. Any last words, guys? We should go to one of those sites that makes up like fake Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew covers and uh, do yeah. one up. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I want to thank uh, my players. <laughs> Not resurrecting resurrecting cows that, seems dude. a very bad idea. Not dead. Resurrected cows seems like it's a much more <laughs> satanic ritual. Um, that beef tastes <laughs> otherworldly. Uh, it was only a steak. Why did you resurrect it? Never mind. Uh, again, thanks to my players, uh, Pat, Marie, and Nax. Uh, Marie, if people are looking to follow what we're doing and hopefully catch up on the previous campaign or anything else. Uh, well, we, we have our Facebook page, Legend of the Drowned Isles. Our Facebook group, Watchers of the Drowned Isles. I try to share when we're filming on both of those. Uh, and... Taking over for Jody, we have the YouTube like comment. Apparently, it's good to get things shared. Ring, Ring the, bell the bell so that you know when we're, know we means. put it up. Stuff like that. Ring the one bell, not Indeed. the three bells, like the inn. That's right? true. That's true. Well, if you rang the three bells, you're yeah. definitely going to get attention. <laughs> All right. That's it for today, folks. Uh, thanks for playing. And th